Members 115 having arrived, I'm going to call the April 7th, 2022 meeting of the House Taxes Committee to order under rules 10.01. And members of the public, if you want to have the same materials that we will be addressing in this meeting, uh, please go to the website, Minnesota House of Representatives, then go to committees and divisions, then go to Taxes Committee and you'll find that off on the right hand side. So with that, uh, Ms. Griska, would you please take the roll? Representative Marquardt. Marquardt present. Representative Marquardt present. Representative Liz Lagarde. Representative Liz Lagarde present. Representative Liz Lagarde present. Representative David. David's present. Representative David's present. Representative Agbaje. Present. Representative Agbaje present. Representative Carlson. Carlson is present. Representative Carlson present. Representative Detmer. Detmer present. Representative Detmer present. Representative Garofalo. Garofalo present. Representative Garofalo present. Representative Gomez. Gomez present. Representative Gomez present. Representative Her. Present. Representative Her present. Representative Hertos. Hertos present. Representative Hertos present. Representative Howard. Representative Howard. Howard present. Representative Howard present. Representative McDonald. McDonald present. Representative McDonald present. Representative Miller. Miller present. Representative Miller present. Representative Moran. Present. Representative Moran present. Representative Mortensen. Representative Mortensen. <clears throat> Representative Robbins. Present. Representative Robbins present. Representative Sundell. Sandell present. Representative Sundell present. Representative Schultz. Schultz present. Representative Schultz present. Representative Stevenson. Present. Representative Stevenson present. Representative Swazinski. Representative Swazinski. Representative Joachim. Present. Representative Joachim, present. We do have a quorum. Thank you very much, Ms. Griska. With that, we need to approve the April 6, 2022 minutes. Representative McDonald, would you like to make that motion? Well, I might as well, since I've been doing it most of the year. So yes, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make that motion. Very good. Representative McDonald moves approval of the April 6, 2022 minutes. Members, please unmute yourself, call for the vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Uh, the motion does prevail and the uh, April 6, 2022 minutes are approved. Uh, so members, I'd like to work through, just talk about quickly the process that we're going to go through uh, today. Uh, and it is a markup on the tax omnibus bill. So what's going to happen here briefly is I'm going to move House File 3669 uh, to be referred to the Committee on Ways and Means. Then I'm going to move uh, basically the delete all amendment. That's the bill we've been referring to in doing the spreadsheets and the summary. I'll move that A22-0407 amendment. And then we're not going to vote on that. And then... Um, we will then take amendments to the DE amendment and all, all of your amendments have been written to do that. And um, also any amendment that was just a bill, uh, we will adjust uh, later on. So everything is fine on that. Uh, so we will then uh, go over those amendments. And when all the amendments are completed, by the way, we'll go over the amendments. We've got a couple like three right off the bat. And then we're basically going to take them in, in the order in which they were received. Uh, so then when those are all completed, we will then vote on the DE1 amendment and that can be a voice vote, doesn't have to be a roll call vote. And then at that point, we will take members comments. I mean, certainly comment on the amendments, but at that point, 
it will then be members' comments on the on the bill. And um, the last four speakers, just so you know, what I plan to do and uh, give you the opportunity, the last four speakers in order under members' comments would be Representative Hurtaz, uh, Chair Joachim, uh, Representative Davids, and then the chair. And then we will then vote on 3669 uh, as amended. Uh, so any questions on that process today? Very good. And I want to also thank members for getting your amendments in so we could get them uh, properly posted and so forth. That's uh, very gracious of you. So at this time, uh, I am going to move House File 3669 be referred to the taxes, uh, <laughs> be referred to the committee on ways and means. Uh, then next, I am going to move the A22 0407 amendment. And that is basically the delete everything amendment. So now we uh, will go to uh, amendments. And the first one we have up is the author's amendment here. Uh, I would like to move the A18 amendment. And I'm going to briefly go over it. Much of it is technical. Much of it is technical corrections made after review by the Department of Revenue. And, and so um, assume that most of it is all just technical. And even some of the things I'm gonna list are pretty technical, but just wanna refer to various folks. So, uh, on line 1.14, if you want to follow, uh, that has to do with beginner farmer's credit, just um, uh, clarifying what assets have to be referred to. Line 1.20, uh, deal with the post-secondary uh, grants, 1.20 to 1.22, uh, kind of uh, defining the emergency grant uh, a little bit more. Uh, pages uh, lines 2.4 to 2.9 deals with putting an eight year sunset uh, on a lot of these, the emergency credit, the workforce grant credit, uh, kind of the expiring grants, what uh, expires the grants after eight years. Um, lines 2.29 to 3.3 deal with historic rehab just some clarification on that. Uh, line 3.4 and 3.8 deals with our rebate. Uh, the child credit rebate of the feds was 17 and under, and this is just kind of clarifying to make sure uh, ours is 16 and under, so it's not matched up with the federal one. Um, lines 3.13 to 3.24 deals with the exemption for county fairs on pre Pre sales, and it was some recommendations by DOR. Uh, lines 4.1 to 4.7 is again some eight year expiration dates. Um, lines 4.10 to 4.12 uh, deals with uh, the veteran spouse's disability. It just reinstates some, some spouses who have lost benefits. It reinstates those. So it just had to have some clarification. Uh, 4.23 to 4.25 is technical for local option sales taxes. Um, deals with some 4.26 to 4.29 deals with certificates of rent paid. Just uh, we basically move that from the technical and policy bill uh, to this part of the bill. So it's actually in a couple bills because the renters credit now went on the income tax. We just kind of moved it over. Uh, lines 5.3 to 5.6 deals with the uh, November forecast shifts. And um, we took out some of the aids that were gonna be shifted just because according to the Department of Revenue, it just didn't work timing wise. So there's still 11 shifts in there with the biggest ones being local government aid and county program aid that if the November forecast showed there's enough uh, positive surplus, the steps would go down and it would hit get to that. And that still would be a uh, shift of about $489 million to do those. 
um, and then the remainder of it, 5.15 to the end, we're putting purpose statements on you know all of our sales tax exemptions, the Minnesota State High School League, angel investment, property tax exemptions, and so forth. So members, uh, any questions on that? Otherwise, I uh, will move to adopt. Hearing none, members, I'd like to, um, uh, the motion is to adopt the A18 uh, amendment to the, to the amendment. All those, in, please unmute yourself. All those in favor of the A18 amendment, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. The motion does prevail. The A18 amendment uh, is adopted uh, to the E amendment. All right, uh, next one, members, we have the A17 amendment. I think that is Representative Gomez. There you are, uh, Representative Gomez. Hi. Yeah, thank you so much, Mr. Chair. So um, the A17 deals with the uh, local homeless prevention aid that was included in our omnibus tax bill last year. Um, it adds the 11 federally recognized sovereign tribal governments um, to uh, participation in the aid program, in addition to the local governments, the counties that um, were originally included. So, excuse me. So basically it takes 11% of the original amount, which is 20 million a year and um, allocates that to be divided equally among the 11 sovereign tribal nations, uh, federally recognized tribal nations in Minnesota. Um, just quickly while we're doing this, uh, tribal nations are increasingly dealing with this issue um, themselves and, and in collaboration with their local governments. But, you know, we hear a lot, you know, I'm, I'm the chair of the homelessness division and um, according to our staff and, you know, the people who are studying this issue, American Indian people are um, many times more likely to experience homelessness and especially unsheltered homelessness even when you control for, you know, poverty and other um, kind of indicators or other, other things that might contribute to homelessness. So um, I'm, you know, really thankful for the um, tribes for stepping forward and noting our omission of them because this is really just kind of fixing our mistake of not including them as partners to begin with. So, um, you know, this will just uh, assist the, our tribal nations in being able to um, help out families in their own communities who are experiencing homelessness or housing instability. So I would appreciate your support. Thank you very much, uh, Representative Gomez. And if my, from last year, the aides do not go out, I think until this next year, is that correct? So, I mean, there yeah. hasn't been aids distributed up to this point. Is that correct, Representative Gomez? Yes, Mr. Chair. So the um, the aids will begin to be distributed in 2023. So okay. luckily we're, we're getting to do this fix before any money goes out the door. So, um, yeah. Okay. Members, any questions for Representative Gomez on the A17 amendment? If not, uh, members, I would uh, ask for a yes vote. And so we're, let's call for the vote on the A17 amendment. All those in favor say aye. 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 All say nay. Uh, the motion is, uh, the, A, the motion does prevail. The A17 amendment uh, is adopted. And that is to the A22 amendment. Uh, next we have, um, thank you, Representative Gomez. <laughs> Next, we have the A10 amendment. And is that Representative uh, Davids, are you doing that one? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'll move the A10 amendment. All right, Chair Davids moves the A10 amendment. Would you like to speak to it? Yes, basically what we're doing on page 93, line 31, we strike the second or and after parent, insert grandparent, step parent, stepchild, uncle, aunt, nephew, or niece. Now this was carried uh, previously by Representative Petersburg. Uh, and basically I would consider this a technical amendment, but uh, basically we missed adding it uh, to subdivision 34 uh, when this was put into law. So it's correct in one part of the statute, not in the other. So this just corrects it uh, so that the statute's consistent. 
And I would really, really appreciate a yes vote on this because it's Representative Petersburg's birthday, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Chair Davids. And yeah, that was something we did put into the bill last year. And I do believe it, it, it matches the intent. It is something we should have included last year. It matches the intent of what we're trying to do. And uh, I would certainly um, ask members to support um, the A-10 amendment. Any other thoughts or questions? If not, I'm gonna call for the vote on the A-10 amendment. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those aye. opposed aye. say nay. The motion does prevail. Uh, the A-10 amendment is adopted to the A-22 uh, amendment. Uh, next up, we have the, uh, I'll take House File 2799. Who's got House File 2799? That is the, the uh, Social Security. Who would like to offer that? That's uh, mine, Re Representative Marquardt. Okay, Representative Hurtas uh, mm -hmm. moves uh, Amendment House File 2799. And again, on all of these, we would certainly um, instruct staff to, you know, make the proper corrections if we have to make them. Uh, Representative Hurtas has moved House File 2799. Representative Hurtas. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, House File 2799 uh, provided for a 100% inclusion of all Social Security uh, payments from the federal government to state, and state uh, residents and would not be taxed under Minnesota taxation. Um, <clears throat> members, uh, Social Security, uh, by virtue uh, other than disability, is uh, provided to those who are 65 and older, uh, in some cases 62, but uh, 65, 66 is basically our seniors. Uh, all of us have gotten uh, numerous emails uh, over the course of the year to uh, end this taxation of Social Security payments. This is our largely retired community or mostly retired community. Uh, in the time of uh, increased uh, costs at the pump for gasoline and for food costs, medical costs uh, are increasing, they're on fixed incomes. This is a, an effective way to keep a little bit more of their earnings to cover their increased costs and expenses. So in a nutshell, uh, we all know what it's about. It's just ending the taxation of social security payments. Uh, we're a handful of about 12 states out of the nation that continue to do this and uh, it's time uh, that we recognize that uh, you know this has been a, a uh, above the line or below the line deduction. Uh, you're taxed on it when as part of your uh, work history. Uh, you pay taxes on Social Security before it's deducted from your paycheck, and now that the uh, benefits are being distributed, you're being taxed on it again. So, with that, members, I would ask for everybody's support and hope you will include House File 2799 in the omnibus tax. Thank you very much, Representative Hurtas. Any other comments on House File 2799? So members, uh, in House File 3669, as we will amend it, it does uh, have uh, Social, Security, Social Security benefit cuts. We set a level of $75,000 for a married couple, about $59,000 for a single senior. And say, if you're Making under that uh, in income, you won't pay anything in Social Security benefit tax. We think uh, that is a, a good cut, but our plan, we, we don't just do that. I mean, what's really important is that we're also providing significant property tax cuts for seniors and making sure they can stay in their homes and remain independent. And, and so that's a big part of our plan. So we really think uh, what we have in this bill uh, really addresses the concerns that senior citizens have. And it's, uh, again, um, cuts on the Social Security benefits, we do do that, uh, but also making sure that the home that they raised their kids in and they've had Christmas and now they're having the grandkids come in and for Christmas and they wanna stay independent and remain in their home and these property tax cuts in our bill do that. But also in other areas of our budget, uh, allows us for ha to have high quality, top-notch healthcare for when they need that also. 
Uh, other discussion on this, members? If not, uh, I'm going to call for the vote um, on the House File 2799. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Say nay. No. 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 Uh, the motion does not prevail. Uh, the amendment is not adopted. Uh, next oh. on the list, we have um, House uh, Amendment A, the A5 amendment. And is that Representative Robbins? Right? Yes, Mr. Chair. All right, Representative Robbins, please introduce your, move your amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Um, this, um, to the point that Chair so eloquently just spoke about, about the need to keep seniors in their homes, the A5 would increase the homestead tax credit um, to um, increase the amount of uh, the maximum refund to $500 reduce all the co-pays by 5% and increase the top income threshold to $155,000. So Mr. Chair, with all respect, it improves on what's in the bill and is more in line with what we heard in the committee bill. Very good. Any comments on uh, the A5 amendment? Uh, Cherry Joaquim. Piece of paper with Thank you, Mr. Chair. I unmuted but forgot to raise my hand. Um, members, I just want to first say that um, we uh, we did hear two different versions of PTR in the division report, and what we included in the full tax bill is really the whole bill is really carefully balanced. It helps our young families starting out, helps seniors aging in place, like the chair said, helps our renters, our homeowners, and many more Minnesotans. Um, the full tax bill invests in credits for childcare businesses hit the hardest by COVID, as well as making substantial investments in housing stability that benefit all Minnesotans, but especially seniors. Um, while providing permanent tax cuts and other continuing credits, the bill is fiscally responsible into the future. More importantly, as a part of a bigger package that our committees put together to invest um, in Minnesotans, including investments to our workforce, K through 12, higher ed, and in our jobs proposal, it helps folks um, fill those jobs that we so desperately need them to do. It is a budget that in housing for those workers and transportation system that'll get them to work. It's a budget that addresses Minnesota's healthcare needs and helps those hit hardest by COVID from our long-term care facilities to our businesses. So members, thank you for indulging me, but I just wanted to say that the tax bill itself is part of a bigger package and it's our responsibility to think of that bigger picture as we craft all of our budget bills. Um, this is also the lens we're looking through today when we discuss all of these amendments. Uh, will a proposed amendment maintain that balance or is it gonna topple what we've created and crafted together? So I just wanna get that out there as we talk about the amendments. Um, to this specific amendment, yes, this was Representative Bonner's bill we did here in the property tax division. We also heard the property tax reduction bill that I, I also put together. And um, while this, you know, this PTR bill that is in this amendment increases the brackets um, to 155,000. I, and I do appreciate that. I would ask for a no vote because what we've done in our division report, um, not only have we indexed the brackets to inflation, raised the max, changed the threshold and copay changes that we did, really focus on that 21,000 to 77,000 income uh, range to give them some added relief. These are people that are, are starting teachers, maybe CNAs, there's someone making $15 an hour minimum wage. So I thought it was very important to really focus some added relief there as well. So please members, I'd ask for a no vote. Uh, thank you, Chair Joachim. And, you know, kind of adding to what Chair Joachim is, is saying is that, you know, you never, you know, when we take this bill in the conference and Representative Robbins, this is certainly um, a program I, I think most members support. But as we take this in the conference, our tax bill target, well, there isn't officially one now, but it could get bigger in the global agreement. And so every one of these, a lot of plans that are proposals that are in this tax bill are scalable, are scalable to go up. And there's a number of them that would pertain to a lot of the amendments today. And you know, just like the construction on sales tax for Folks, I know Representative Swazinski has been a real champion on that. 
And right now we just have two years. I mean, there's, uh, if we can do that permanently, I think it's something we'd like to do. There are more residents. Uh, so with that, uh, Representative Swidzinski, I, I guess I got off the uh, A5 amendment a little bit, but I know we're coming to yours soon. But no, Mr. Chair, I, I think, thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, and then just to kind of your comments, I think, you know, as we get closer to the end, you know, the more of these amendments we take, it just makes your job easier as far as negotiating, you know, as bringing those two bills together. We're just, you know, we're just trying to bring these two bills together, uh, get them as close as possible. And these amendments, I think, kind of help us get in that direction and, and, you know, not necessarily trying to be adversary with these amendments, we're just trying to help yeah. bring the two bills together. So. Uh, thank you very much, Representative Swazinski. Appreciate that. Uh, Representative Robbins, last comments on Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, members. And uh, Chair E. Wilking, I really do appreciate your comments about a balance bill. I really feel like this is an area where this bill could be improved. So we have more balance between the credit for renters and the credit for homeowners. So that is why I brought this amendment. And, um, you know, it, it, I, I had a long conversation yesterday with some seniors in my district who um, are really going to struggle to stay in their homes because of the property tax increases. And so I really, I really ask the members to seriously consider this. And, and Mr. Chair, if it's all right, I would like to request a roll call on this. There will be a roll call vote. Seeing 15 hands. Oh, that's right. Wrong, <laughs> wrong body. All right. <laughs> yeah, all David's right. doing exercises. There you go. Thank you very much, Representative Robbins. Um, so we will um, uh, go, before we go to roll vote, the, uh, I'd ask members to vote no. So uh, Ms. Griska, please take the roll. Repre uh, Representative Marquardt. Marquardt votes no. Marquardt no. Liz Lagarde. Aye. Representative Liz Lagarde, aye. Representative Davids. Davids, aye. Dave Representative Davids, aye. Representative Agbaje. No. Representative Agbaje, no. Representative Carlson. Carlson, no. Representative Carlson, no. Representative Detmer. Yes, aye. Representative Detmer, aye. Representative Garofalo. Aye. Representative Garofalo, aye. Representative Gomez. Gomez, no. Representative Gomez, no. Representative Her. Her, no. Representative Her, no. Representative Hurtas. Yes. Representative Hurtas, yes. Representative Howard. Howard, no. Representative Howard, no. Representative McDonald. McDonald, yes. Representative McDonald, yes. Representative Miller. Miller, yes. Representative Miller, yes. Representative Moran. Representative Mortensen. Aye. Representative Mortensen, aye. Representative Robbins. Aye. Representative Robbins, aye. Representative Sandell. Sandell, no. Representative Sandell, no. Representative Schultz. Schultz, no. Representative Schultz, no. Representative Stevenson. Stevenson, no. Representative Stevenson, no. Representative Swazinski. Aye. Representative Swazinski, aye. Representative Joachim. No. Representative Joachim, no. Representative Moran. We have 10 ayes and 10 nays. A vote of 10 ayes and 10 nays, the A5 amendment does not eight, prevail uh, and the A5 amendment is not adopted. I think we're uh, moving on to the next amendment. Um, we have the A6 amendment and it is Representative Davids. Uh, thank you very uh, much, Mr. Chairman. The A6 amendment, amendment is a student loan credit it increases the maximum credit to 5,000 and makes it permanent. Uh, there are some different things. I mean, this was basically represent HERS bill and I think it's a great idea. I think it really helps not only students with student debt, but it helps uh, our employers that are actually very much in, in favor of this as uh, basically a employment recru recruiting tool. 
Uh, Mr. Chairman, I ask for a uh, roll call and I stand for any questions. A roll call has been requested. Any comments on the A6 amendments? Amendment. So members, this is certainly uh, a bill uh, that we had heard, Representative Herr had championed this and it was back in 2017, Chair Davids, I think this was nation leading. So um, I think we're making very significant uh, increases in that right now. We're almost tripling the credit in this bill from 500 to 1400. And again, just the cost that came back and the balance of the tax bill with what Chair Joaquin mentioned with other things uh, that we're looking at doing. And the fact that uh, potentially we can scale things up uh, depending on conference and so forth. So it's certainly something uh, we um, support in doing those student loans, but members, I wouldn't ask for on this specific amendment on no vote. Uh, Chair Davids, any closing thoughts? Uh, I would respectfully ask for a yes vote on this amendment. All right, we're gonna vote on the A6 amendment. A roll call has been requested. Ms. Griska, please take the roll. Representative Marcourt. Uh, Marcourt votes no. Representative Marcourt votes no. Representative Liz Lagarde. No. Representative Liz Lagarde, no. Representative Davids. Davids votes yes. Representative Davids, yes. Representative Agbaje. No. Representative Agbaje, no. Representative Carlson. Carlson, no. Representative Carlson, no. Representative Detmer. Detmer, aye. Representative Detmer, aye. Representative Garofalo. Garofalo, no. Representative Garofalo, no. Representative Gomez. Gomez, no. Representative Gomez, no. Representative Her. No. Representative Her, no. Representative Her talk. No. Representative Hertas? Hertas, no. Representative Hertas, no. Representative Howard? Representative Howard? Howard, no. Representative Howard, no. Representative McDonald? McDonald, aye. Representative McDonald, aye. Representative Miller? Miller, aye. Representative Miller, aye. Representative Moran. Could you no. stick with the team people, question mark? Representative Moran? No. Representative Moran, no. Representative Mortensen? Jobs, stick with Mortensen, aye. Representative Mortensen, aye. Representative Robbins? Aye. Representative Robbins, aye. Representative Sandell? Uh, Representative Sandell, we, you were mu muted. All right, Sandell, no. Representative Sandell, no. Representative Schultz. Schultz, no. Representative Schultz, no. Representative Stevenson. Stevenson, no. Representative Stevenson, no. Representative Swazinski. Swazinski, yes. Representative Swazinski, yes. Representative Joachim. Joachim, no. Representative Joachim, no. Hertas changes from no to yes. Okay. So we have eight eyes, 13 no's. Uh, Ms. Griska, is, did you get uh, Representative Hertas's? Yes. Change? Oh, okay, okay. Very good. So with there being eight eyes and 13 uh, nays, the A6 amendment does not prevail. The A6 amendment is not adopted. Um, next, the A13 amendment, and I think that's Chair Davids. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll move the A13 amendment. Uh, Mr. Chairman and members, uh, this language I'm carrying for Representative Tice for Wade Park local option sales tax. It allows Wade Park to raise $10 million to reconstruct, reconstruct the 10th Avenue, uh, 10th Avenue, I'm sorry, 
Um, this uh, provision was stripped out of last year's omnibus bill because they uh, apparently had omitted some language. Uh, what we're doing here is we are uh, adding this with a notwithstanding clause uh, as far as any uh, resolutions go and so forth. And we are doing, just, just to be consistent here, uh, we are uh, recommending uh, Rochester has $50 million worth of transportation projects in this bill. Uh, so this is a very needed uh, provision uh, in a four weight park. And I'd appreciate your consideration, Mr. Chairman. I'd respectfully ask for a roll call. Roll call has been uh, requested. Um, Chair Joaquin. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Representative Davids. Um, last year, we did incorporate the majority of the local option sales tax request from Wade Park brought forward by Representative Tice, um, including the costs associated with their regional trail connection and their public safety facility. Um, we did not include um, 10th Avenue street projects as there was a decision to move away from funding local street projects with the local option sales tool. And as you kind of pointed out in the way you drafted this currently in state statute, there's also a requirement to submit a city council resolution for a local option sales tax project to the legislature by January 31st of a year the municipality wishes to put a measure on the ballot. Um, we, we added that into language so that the local folks had a chance at their city council to voice their opinion before it came to the legislature. Um, it was my understanding that Wake Park did not submit a resolution this year for the road project. Um, and I know you mentioned Rochester, but Rochester's request is unique as it's continuing a current sales tax that is being used for roads. And while we've moved away from this tool being used for local roads, Rochester is one of our four cities of the first class. They're a very large regional center and Rochester has unique needs. So I would ask members to vote no on this amendment. Chair Davids, last. Well, well, thank you. I, I hope we can uh, support this vote for this. Um, I, I understand Rochester is the center of the universe, but but I think Wake Park, uh, this is tremendously, this would be tremendously helped for that area, that region. And again, we did put the notwithstanding clause in there. In 2020, they um, did have a resolution. I've got a copy of that. Uh, and everything, everything Representative uh, Joachim, Chair Joachim said it is correct, uh, but I really think that we need to um, I help out Wade Park on this one. Uh, and I, I, like I said, I'm carrying this on behalf of uh, Representative Tice. And, uh, you know, $50 million for Rochester specs, but special circumstances or not, uh, I, I think if we vote no on this, uh, I would just question whether there be some level of hypocrisy in that. Um, I think we need to get rid of, rid of hypocrisy and voting the affirmative on my amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members. A roll call has been requested on the 813 amendment. Ms. Griska, would you please take the roll? Representative Marquardt. Marquardt votes no. Rep Representative Marquardt, no. Representative Lislagard. No. Representative Lislagard, no. Representative Davids. Davids, aye. Representative Davids, aye. Representative Agbaje. No. Representative Agbaje, no. Representative Carlson. Carlson, no. Representative Carlson, no. Representative Detmer. Detmer, aye. Representative Detmer, aye. Representative Garofalo. Garofalo, aye. Representative Garofalo, aye. Representative Gomez. Gomez, no. Representative Gomez, no. Representative Her. No. Representative Her, no. Representative Hurtas. Hurtas, aye. Representative Hurtas, aye. Representative Howard. Howard, no. Representative Howard, no. Representative McDonald. McDonald, aye. Representative McDonald, aye. Representative Miller. Miller, aye. Representative Miller, aye. Representative Moran. No. Representative Moran, no. Representative Mortensen. No. Representative Mortensen, no. Rep Representative Robbins. Aye. Representative Robbins, aye. Representative Sandell. Sandell, no. Representative Sandell, no. Representative Schultz. Schultz, no. Representative Schultz, no. Representative Stevenson. No. Representative Stevenson, no. Representative Swazinski. Aye. Representative Swazinski, aye. Mm -hmm. Representative Joachim. No. 
Representative Joachim, no. We have eight ayes, 13 nays. With eight ayes and 13 nays, the motion does not prevail. The 813 amendment is not adopted. Uh, next is the A19 amendment and uh, Chair Davids. That is and thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will move the A9 A19 amendment. This is the Greg Davids good neighbor policy like a good neighbor. Greg Davids is there. Uh, <laughs> this came in, uh, I think it was about like 2011 or something. When I first was elected in February of uh, 1991. Uh, the most controversial issue I'd ever seen up to this point was the Rochester sales tax. They wanted to issue a sales tax uh, and collect money for a library, a city hall, and let's see, a library, city hall, and, and something else that were normally paid for by property taxes. But what they did was they went out for local option sales tax uh, to raise money for three items and have the neighboring cities pay for it uh, over 60% paid for by people from outside the city limits of Rochester. That was pretty contentious, pretty brutal. So in 2011, I thought, you know, Rochester is coming back for sales tax and another, and a, quite a large sales tax, uh, local option sales tax. And I got to thinking, I don't want to go through 1991 again. And of course, being the one that coined the phrase peace in the valley, wasn't over this issue, it was over an issue with uh, credit unions and banks. But I thought, you know, if there's some way we could get a buy-in from surrounding communities, how do we do that? And so what we did is we took a compass, put it right on City Hall in Rochester on the map, went 25 miles out and allowed uh, these uh, area cities to receive some of the Rochester sales tax that they were paying the majority of in the first place. And it was done uh, very late in the session. There weren't a whole lot of uh, guardrails put on but after there was a study on it, like 10 years after uh, uh, it happened, and what the Post Bulletin did a study, and what they found was that um, all of the cities used it for either economic development, housing, things that really helped the cities. There was one city, which will remain unnamed, a very, very small city that actually used it for a, a dog park. Now, the dog lovers of America thought that was a brilliant move. I didn't think it was so hot. But so we really did a good job and I'll hear from all the dog lovers. I, I love dogs. We used to raise for red scamper and I love dogs. So what we did was we put this good neighbor policy in and there was no contention at all. There was no acrimony at all. Uh, in fact, local mayors from surrounding towns and city council members were writing letters of support for the Rochester sales tax. And it passed, uh, the city of Rochester uh, made the payment to the neighboring cities. And once again, the Greg David's good neighbor policy had peace in the valley. So as Rochester is going for like over, what, 150 million plus, um, I think it's only reasonable that the Greg David's good neighbor policy is reinstated. Uh, and members, that's, uh, I think it's in, this, this is in addition to what they're going for, it doesn't take away from any of their projects at all. Uh, and with that, uh, I think we've got some good traction over in the Senate on this. I do not want a negative vote today. So Mr. Chairman and members, I'm gonna withdraw the E-19 amendment. Uh, thank you, Representative Davids withdraws the A-19 oh. amendment. Thank you so much. Uh, next up, we have uh, the A-12 amendment and Representative Hertog. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, the A-12 amendment uh, deals with the uh, local government aid <clears throat> distribution and is the attempt to uh, add again a alternative formula to the local government aid uh, system that we have. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, we had uh, stakeholder groups and meetings. Uh, it's been last said in this committee that there uh, wasn't support for this, but uh, that isn't really quite true because I've talked to each of those stakeholders since that time and they are not opposed to it been uh, mostly neutral about it. To recap what it does, uh, members, is it takes 2% uh, of the total LGA appropriation and puts it into a set-aside formula that is a safety net 
for communities that are falling off of LGA because of the metrics that are used in the formula. It also uh, provides a minimum floor uh, that each community could be guaranteed getting if they don't qualify under that. Members, we have about 112 cities right now that are off of formula. The formula changes that are being proposed in this bill is an improvement, but it kind of maintains the status quo because there's still about 46 or 47 cities that don't receive it. Currently members under that uh, 112 cities that do not get any local government aid, it represents approximately 27% of the state's population. One fourth of the state is pulling the wagon for the rest of the communities in terms of what their contributions are to the general fund. More importantly, I'd like to point out that this program when started was distributed in a much more equitable and fair manner in terms of how the money was distributed. And that was part of the reason for the buy-in to the Minnesota miracle and the redistribution of sales tax that was imposed to redistribute that wealth. It also provides predictability and budgeting for local communities. Mr. Chair, you've been a mayor. Chair David's been a mayor. I've been a mayor. Representative McDonald's been a mayor. Uh, many other members in this committee have been mayors. And I can look at all these runs and distributions and the current LGA formula. And it's, it's pretty pathetic to see that communities of similar size get substantial amounts of LGA while other ones get absolutely zero. Now, Chair Yuakim and I have entertained and looked at all sorts of proposals from communities all around the state that are looking for local option sales tax to make improvements within their community that they all seem to fit the bill of regional significance. And What's troubling about LOST is it's encouraging communities to do projects and capital improvements with the notion that it only will cost us a fraction of, of what our local debt service will be because we'll have other people visiting our town pay for our improvements with sales tax collected in the community. Now, receiving a minimum distribution, something that's predictable and reliable, Mr. Chair, is not unlike what homeowners have to do with regard to budgeting for their improvements. Think about the leverage that can be created in many communities across the state by knowing that they're going to have a predictable stream of local government aid. Given the current interest rates of uh, about three and a half percent, Leverage to a 30 year debt service on general obligation bonds, a mere $50,000 to a community would be leverage enough to make a, a million and a half dollar improvement without raising property taxes. Think about that. I mean, it is leverage and it is predictability. But Mr. Chair, um, we worked on this for a number of years. It is something that I worked on with uh, house research and nonpartisan staff. We've come up with a reasonable formula. It is something that really addresses the sparsity of a lot of communities who have few rooftops and low commercial base uh, to leverage uh, property taxes inside of their own community. So this is something that's been on my radar for nearly 20 years. I've been working on it for 10 years coming to the legislature. I think we're close. I think there's no reason at this time that we can't make this change given all of the runs. I won't call out cities by names, but gee whiz members, there's, there's communities in rural Minnesota that are getting a million and a half, $2 million a year of local government aid without significant populations. When you make these comparisons to how many cities are getting absolutely nothing, there's just no excuse for it. So with that, Mr. Chair, I've uh, explained this bill several times. I still intend to uh, meet with you to further discuss this to make you understand fully all of the nuances that I've been trying to promote in the inclusion of this 
one additional formula change. It, it creates, like I say, a safety net for those cities that will continue to fall off of it as we go forward, gives them some assurance from base budgeting in the local communities that they can rely on some support from the state. After all, they are contributing as well. So with that, Mr. Chair, I will ask for a roll call on this one as well. Roll call has been requested. Um, Sherry Joaquin. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Representative Hurtas, and thank you for being willing to work on the LGA formula this fall along with myself and the many stakeholders. So, um, and I know as a former mayor, and I'm a former city council member, I know that we both understand the value of this program. Um, what we did this fall was pull in League of Minnesota Cities, Metro Cities, Greater Coalition of Greater Minnesota Cities and Small Cities. They worked with our nonpartisan staff on a formula. They went through 40 different regression models and they do firmly support a need-based formula. Um, and that need-based formula is so important for so many of our cities across the state. I think of the one city that always comes top to mind for me is one of the cities that two of our, our uh, my kids went to for undergrad and that's Morris, Minnesota. Um, they have a university, they have a regional hospital, they have a county seat and their population doubles for part of the year. And all those folks are in their town using their sewer, water um, and road infrastructure, public safety and that burden on their local taxpayers without local government aid would be huge. So I am a very strong believer in a need-based formula. Um, and I've heard in, in, uh, in testimony that our stakeholders are as well. Um, so while I agree with you that every city's diff needs are, every city has needs, every city's are, needs are unique. Um, I still firmly believe in working on this, um, on this need-based formula and not a per capita distribution where everybody gets something. Um, but that being said, I still do appreciate your work on this concept as well. And at this time, I would still ask members for a no vote. Before I go back to um, Representative Hurtas for closing comments, anyone else would like to comment on the A12 amendment? See none, Representative Hurtas. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, thank you, uh, Representative Joachim. Uh, we have uh, consistently uh, talked around this issue in circles about what the definition of need is. And uh, I reject the notion that need is uh, restricted and limited to five metrics in a formula that a majority chooses to pick. This is just unacceptable. It continues, and it has been going on for decades. And Every community does have needs. And as I have mentioned, um, you know, these communities that, that uh, are not getting local government aid are significant contributors to the general fund. 2%, 2% out of a total appropriation. We're talking about $11 million out of more than $560 million that would go to communities that don't get LGA. The LGA uh, alternative formula that I'm proposing to add also has a cap so that it's not a windfall to those very communities that you think don't have needs. It has a cap. This is mostly directed, and to be fair, I've included every city, but this is mostly directed at small cities under 5,000. Those are the ones. You can't tell me that they don't have needs. So um, I'll keep working on it. You won't see me go away on this thing as we uh, continue to go through the rest of the process with this, whether it's on the floor or ways and means with my colleagues in the Senate. So thank you, Mr. Chair, and I uh, look forward to the roll call vote. Thank you. Uh, roll call has been requested. Ms. Griska, please take the roll on the 812 amendment. Representative Marquardt. Marquardt votes no. Representative Marquardt, no. no. Representative Lissagard. No. Representative Lissagard, no. Representative David. David votes aye. Representative David's aye. Representative Agbaje. No. Representative Agbaje, no. Representative Carlson. Carlson, no. Representative Carlson, no. Representative Detmer. Detmer, aye. 
Representative Detmarai. Representative Garofalo. Garofalo, aye. Representative Garofalo, aye. Representative Gomez. Representative Gomez. Gomez, no. Representative Gomez, no. Representative Her. Her, no. Representative Her, no. Representative Her, toss. So what do you think? Yes. <laughs> Representative Her, toss, yes. I still have to ask. Representative Howard. Howard, no. Representative Howard, no. Representative McDonald. Yes, yes, sir, yes. Representative McDonald, yes. Representative Miller. Miller, aye. Representative Miller, aye. Representative Moran. Moran, no. Representative Moran, no. Representative Mortensen. Mortensen, no. Representative Mortensen, no. Representative Robbins. Aye. Representative Robbins, aye. Representative Sandell. Sandell, no. Representative Sandell, no. Representative Schultz. Schultz, no. Representative Schultz, no. Representative Stevenson. Stevenson, no. Representative Stevenson, no. Representative Swazinski. Swazinski, aye. Representative Swazinski, aye. Representative Joachim. Joachim, no. Representative Joachim, no. We have eight ayes, 13 no's. Thank you, Ms. Griska. There being eight ayes and 13 nays, the eight, uh, the motion does not prevail. The 812 amendment is not adopted. Is that all you got on the tax committee is eight. We now have uh, next up the A16 amendment, Representative Swazinski. Hey, thank you, members. Uh, thank you, Chair Marquardt. Uh, this is the A16 amendment uh, that I'm moving before the committee uh, just builds on the strength that you already have in the bill. Um, you, you, obviously, I, I've worked hard on the sales tax exemptions for local unit governments and nonprofits across the state. And um, you do have a cutoff date on, I think it ends after 12 months or, or six, six months. Um, for those groups. Um, this amendment just kind of fixes that problem uh, to help alleviate potentially any confusion or, or issues that might arise in the future. Um, it's, it's obvious this is not just a partisan issue. This is very bipartisan. Uh, folks on both sides of the aisle and, and organizations support this. I think that was the, the intention of the, the legislature when uh, sales tax exemption for local unit, units of government was first passed um, and just this, uh, this portion of the bill just puts it back into practicality so that it actually works the way the legislature wanted. Um, <clears throat> this amendment um, gets rid of the, uh, the, uh, the end date and just allows this to go into perpetuity. Uh, I think that was the, the vision of the legislature and I think this would, would help with uh, any issues that uh, might arise and uh, I'd appreciate a green vote. Thank you. Well, thank you, Representative Swazinski. Any uh, comments? To the A16 amendment. So again, Representative Swazinski, thank you for um, you know you have uh, over the last few sessions championed this and just because I don't know if we made this clear, but it is for 18 months from July 1st, 2021 to January 1st, 2022. Uh, but then also any of the communities that came forward with bills. Uh, we would uh, make sure those worked to whatever kind of made it work for them. But um, so thank you. I'm hoping um, ultimately we could probably do it, but for the purposes of today, I'd ask members to uh, vote no. Uh, representatives, before we go to Representative Swazinski, anyone else have any comments? Representative Swazinski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and yeah. this would just also help just with staff time. Um, you know, that, uh, you know, seems to be a fairly heavy load of, of bills that we do here is the sales tax exemptions uh, for this city or that, whether they're building a fire hall or a city liquor store or a, a road project or a sewer project. You know, this, this would really help ease the burden just for the tax committee. And, and as we know, the staff are some of the most important people here and uh, trying to make their job as easy as possible. So it's, it's it's about that too. So I'd appreciate your support. Thank you. Representative Swazinski, did you call for a roll call vote? I, I, 
I you know, I think I might have. Uh, maybe I didn't speak that, but I, I, I didn't mentally think I was a roll call would be appropriate in this manner. So thank you, Mr. Okay. Chair. Are you requesting one then, Representative Swazinski? Yes, Mr. Chair, I request a roll call. Thank okay, you. Okay, very good. So Representative Swazinski has, has moved the A16 amendment and is calling for a roll call vote. Ms. Griska, please take the roll. Representative Marcourt. Marcourt votes no. Representative Marcourt, no. Representative Liz Lagarde. No. Representative Liz Lagarde, no. Representative Davids. Davids votes aye. Representative Davids, aye. Representative Agbaje. No. Representative Agbaje, no. Representative Carlson. Carlson, no. Representative Carlson, no. Representative Detmer. Detmer, aye. Representative Detmer, aye. Representative Garal. Garofalo. Garofalo, aye. Representative Garofalo, aye. Representative Gomez. Gomez, no. Representative Gomez, no. Representative Her. Her, no. Representative Her, no. Representative Hurtas. Us, aye. Representative Hurtas, aye. Representative Howard. Howard, no. Representative Howard, no. Representative McDonald. McDonald, aye. Representative McDonald, aye. Representative Miller. Miller, I. Representative Miller, I. Representative Moran. No. Representative Moran, no. Representative Mortensen. Mortensen, I. Representative Mortensen, I. Representative Robbins. I. Representative Robbins, I. Representative Sandell. Sandell, no. Representative Sandell, no. Representative Schultz. Schultz, no. Representative Schultz, no. Representative Stevenson. Stevenson, no. Representative Stevenson, no. Representative Swazinski. Swazinski, aye. Representative Swazinski, aye. Representative Joachim. No. Representative Joachim, no. We have nine eyes and 12 no's. There being nine eyes and 12 nays, the motion does not prevail. The A16 amendment is not adopted. Uh, next amendment is the House File 182 amendment, Representative Detmer. Thank you, Mr. Chair and, and members. Uh, first of all, Mr. Chair, uh, is this a friendly amendment for you? Uh, well, I haven't heard it yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Would you I first to, of all like to move move the House File 182 amendment? If you will. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, Mr. Chair, as you know, and I think everybody on the committee knows that I, I support uh, our veterans uh, population around the state, not just in my own community, but uh, I just got calls from uh, different people on this bill. And uh, some of you might wanna know, well, how many American legions and BFWs do we have in the state? And um, most, of them, most of them are in small communities. And there's 255 legions around the state. And there's 125 BFWs around the state. But the House Bill 182 does, it provides a property tax exemption for congressional chartered or, uh, veterans organizations. And basically the only ones that have property are your VFW and American legions. And I think we need to take a look at what these two organizations do for your community. I don't, I have no idea how many of you members of this committee are veterans, but if you have not been in your local VFW American Legion, you should go and visit. And we are losing them left and right. Uh, especially the last two years, uh, we've had some problems with uh, uh, the cost and the taxes going up. I know just, just taxes for our our uh, citizens, uh, I've, I've seen tax increases of 26, 36 percent in property taxes. And uh, so this, this, this is something that probably uh, counties are more concerned about than the state should be, really, because uh, there's no cost here for the state or for this uh, omnibus bill. And members, I really believe that uh, this would be the right thing to do for these two organizations. 
that we uh, eliminate the property tax because they put tons of money back into the community. And uh, I have a couple more bills coming up, but I'll talk to those later. Uh, I really feel that uh, this would be the right thing to do for these two organizations. And we have a lot of young veterans now that are coming back off of active duty. Uh, we are trying to get them to join uh, VFWs and American Legions and uh, bring more young leadership in, into these two organizations. So I really encourage you to uh, you know, vote for this. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Representative Detmer. Uh, Chair Yoakim. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Representative Detmer, for your service and for what you've done for veterans in this body. Um, and the veterans that you represent, I appreciate it. My father is a veteran and one of your constituents. My husband's a veteran as well. Um, and once again, I wish you would have approached me this year about hearing the bill in committee. We may have been able to find some middle ground. Um, my concern is, and always has been, is that this bill's drafted shifts property taxes onto other businesses and homesteads, the homesteads that you just so eloquently said are facing rising property taxes increase this year. Um, I know that we've cut um, the rate for these organizations in half in recent years, so they pay half of what a bar owner down the street does, and that bar owner down the street just might be a veteran as well. So I would want to look further into some of these runs and to see what those shift that shift would mean statewide or and more particularly for those municipalities that have those 370 um, organizations. So this at this time I'd have to ask members for a no vote. Any other comments before I turn it back to Representative Detmer? Representative Detmer, to your yeah, thank amendment. you, Mr. Chair and Chair. You came, you know, every year now for the past four years, I've requested hearings. And uh, I think uh, you're mistaken because the, there was a request for a hearing. And, and all the bills that I carried, I've always, as soon as I get them drafted, I put in a request for hearings. And uh, a bill like this should have been in your, in your, in your committee. We should have been able to hear it and uh, talk about it and uh, bring, uh, different organizations in from the VSW American Legion, also from the county, we then could have had a good idea of what it was. So um, I really feel that uh, we have done a disservice to uh, these two organizations. Uh, Chair, you want to keep your, your hand up or? And yes, Mr. Chair. And I just we'll come back to Representative Detmer. Representative Detmer, were you finished? I, yes, thank you. Okay, then you can come back. Representative Yola Kim, I see your hand up again. Yeah, I just wanted to say, I, didn't, I hope I didn't misspeak. I didn't say that you didn't put a hearing request in. I said you didn't come and talk to me about it. We have hundreds of bills in our division, so I would have been happy to chat with you about it. I just wanted to make sure I hadn't misspoken that you were right. You did put a hearing request in last year. Okay. Representative Detmer. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, I do personally feel that this would be a friendly amendment. Uh, if not, I request a roll call. Uh, a roll call has been requested. Any other comments on the House File 182 amendment? If not, Ms. Griska, please take the roll. Representative Marquardt. Marquardt votes no. Representative Marquardt, no. Representative Liz Lagarde. Yes. Representative Liz Lagarde, yes. Representative Davids. Davids votes aye. Representative Davids, aye. Representative Agbaje. No. Representative Agbaje, no. Representative Carlson. Carlson, no. Representative Carlson, no. Representative Detmer. Aye. Representative Detmer, aye. Representative Garofalo. Representative Garofalo. Garofalo, yes. Representative Garofalo, yes. Representative Gomez. Gomez, no. Representative Gomez, no. Representative Her. Her, no. Representative Her, no. Representative Hurtas. Yes. Representative Hurtas, yes. Representative Howard. Howard, no. Representative Howard, no. Representative McDonald. Aye. Representative McDonald, aye. Representative Miller. Miller, aye. Representative Miller, I. Representative Moran. No. 
Representative Moran, no. Representative Mortensen. Mortensen, aye. Representative Mortensen, aye. Representative Robbins. Aye. Representative Robbins, aye. Representative Sandell. Sandell, no. Representative Sandell, no. Representative Schultz. Representative Schultz. Representative Stevenson. No. Representative Stevenson, no. Representative Swazinski. Swazinski, aye. Representative Swazinski, aye. Representative Joachim. No. Representative Joachim, no. Representative Schultz. We have 10 ayes, 10 nays. There being 10 ayes and 10 nays, the motion does not prevail. The House file 182 amendment is not adopted. Uh, next up, we have House file 184 amendment, Representative Detmer. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, close call there on the last bill. <laughs> I was looking uh, for- Representative oh. Detmer, if it was wrestling, we'd be in the sudden uh, overtime. Sudden First overtime, yeah. Would win. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm still going to ask you on this one, too. Is this a friendly amendment for you, Mr. Chair? Uh, please proceed, Representative Denver, with your motion, if you would like. We have the House file number 184. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That and means you'll take you to the mat on it. <laughs> <laughs> please 184 proceed. is a bill that provides sales tax exemptions for items purchased and leased in connection with lawful gambling. And under the current law, lawful gambling organizations pay ta sales tax on items purchased and awarded as prizes to the lawful games, as well as, as uh, on items used for conducting the lawful games. This bill would exempt these items from sales tax. Uh, this bill is effective. Uh, I think uh, you might wanna ask, what are these items? Well, these items uh, would uh, be, uh, Things purchased for gambling equipment by lawful gambling organizations, and such as uh, include bingo cards, pull tabs, tip cards, tip boards, raffle boards, software and electronic pull tabs, and bingo and electronic devices for lawful gambling. These are all required to conduct these these uh, programs in in these different organizations. And uh, I'd have to say that. Uh, when we built that new football stadium there, it was on the backs of a lot of these people, a lot of these organizations that uh, conduct the lawful gambling. And uh, I think the stadium is built, I guess. I, I've been there a few times. And I think now, now's the time to give, uh, my case, the VFW's American Legions and other organizations a break on the taxes that they get paid for this lawful gambling. And um, so I would uh, ask for your support and uh, I see no reason why we can't pa pass this with uh, uh, the amount of money that the state has now. We can put it back into these organizations that again, puts the money back into our, into our communities, our small communities around the state. So uh, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just let this go as, as a friendly amendment, Mr. Chair, because I think this is something that we can do. Thank you. So thank you very much, Representative Detmer, and uh, appreciate you bringing this forward. Um, certainly an issue, you know, one of the things, and I guess the main goal, which we tried to really put a laser focus on in this tax bill this year was how can we have kind of targeted and significant cuts that would really make a difference in people's lives, our families, our workers, and our senior citizens. And, so I mean, what we're doing is uh, providing dollars, you know, directly to people, even through the property tax cuts that we have, almost all of it goes directly to homeowners or renters or like the child credit, the student loan and so forth. Um, so, uh, you know, we've got a lot of priorities on making sure that we get those dollars out to those who need it the most. And so, you know, and again, we didn't have an infinite amount of just dollars here. 
there is, uh, you know, you, it's a $1.6 billion bill in the first biennium, 1.6 into the next, basically, uh, and matching up with the kind of other things we need to do as far as education and healthcare and public safety. Um, you know, that's what our focus is on. So members, uh, this is an important issue. I would ask at this time, members to vote no. Uh, Representative Detmer. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, as you know, I respect you very much. I, I really feel this would, would have been a bill that we could have helped out uh, the charitable gambling uh, this year. Uh, they've done a lot for uh, our professional sports here in Minnesota. And I think it's time that we uh, help these organizations out. And you know, as I mentioned before in, in the previous bill amendment is that uh, we're starting to lose these organizations and uh, the amount of tax they're sending to the state is incredible. And some of them have told me, why should we even do it? And uh, so I think this is a good way for us to uh, uh, put something back in our communities. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, no, thank you, Representative Detmer. And, you know, you bring up kind of talking about the Viking Stadium and that. And I think, you know, there is some discussion, of course, on the stadium reserve and other things. And, and um, I, I mean, I think in before the session's done, let's put it this way, I think there's going to be more discussion on gaming and so forth. So there, there could even be other opportunities. So I don't Mr. know, Representative Detmer. Mr. Chair, you know, I'm out the door after this session. So <laughs> I was hoping to get some of these things done while I'm still, still here. And uh, here uh, hopefully uh, we'll have people take up take up the uh, cause uh, when I'm gone. Maybe it'll be, no, it can't be you, Mr. Chair, because you're out the door too. <laughs> we'll, right. go down, we'll go down to the NCAA tournament and watch it together. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, Representative Detmer, did you call for a roll call? I couldn't remember. No, I didn't. Maybe okay. I should on this one. Maybe I should on this one. I will, let's, let's call a roll call on this one. I, I think I might've turned some people's hearts over to this. Thank you. So I call for a roll call. All right. So just, just being fair here. Uh, all right. So Ms. Griska, there's been a roll call requested. Please take the roll. Representative Marquardt. Marquardt, no. Representative Marquardt, no. Representative Liz Lagarde. Yes. Representative Liz Lagarde, yes. Representative Davids. Davids votes aye. Representative Davids, aye. Representative Akbaje. No. Representative Akbaje, no. Representative Carlson. Carlson, no. Representative Carlson, no. Representative Detmer. Aye. Representative Detmer, aye. Representative Garofalo. Garofalo, aye. Representative Garofalo, aye. Representative Gomez. Gomez, no. Representative Gomez, no. Representative Her. No. Representative Her, no. Representative Hurtas. Hurtas votes yes. Representative Hurtas, yes. Representative Howard. Howard, no. Representative Howard, no. Representative McDonald. McDonald, aye. Representative McDonald, aye. Representative Miller. Miller, aye. Representative Miller, aye. Representative Moran. No. Representative Moran, no. Representative Mortensen. Mortensen, aye. Representative Mortensen, aye. Representative Robbins. Aye. Representative Robbins, aye. Representative Sandell. Sandell, no. Representative Sandell, no. Representative Schultz. Schultz, no. Representative Schultz, no. Representative Stevenson. No. Representative Stevenson, no. Representative Swazinski. Swazinski, aye. Representative Swazinski, aye. Representative Joachim. No. Representative Joachim, no. We have 10 ayes, 11 noes. There being 10 ayes and 11 nays, the motion does not prevail. The House File 184 amendment is not adopted. Uh, next up, the House File 140, Representative Detmer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, we're close again on the last one. Um, this next one has been a priority for um, charitable gambling groups uh, for several years now. 
And uh, this is one I thought uh, we, need, we, we should try to get onto the, onto the omnibus bill. House file 140 modifies the combined net. What it does, you're taxed, you're taxed on your net, not on your gross receipts. So when you, terrible gambling, so when you bring in your gross, uh, gross receipts, um, income, you take care of your expenses, your heating bills and everything else that, that's part of your VFW, American Legion or restaurant, whatever it is, you take care of those bills first, pay, your, pay the people that work for you uh, with this uh, terrible gambling uh, program, and then you're taxed on the net. So that's what it does. You're taxed on the net, not on the gross. So uh, uh, this is something that's been a high priority, I know for the commander's task force, and also um, the different organizations that that work in the charitable gambling. So, Mr. Chair, um, looks like I'll have to uh, have a roll call on this one too, if it's not taken as a friendly amendment. But uh, I hope to get something through here for these organizations. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Representative Detmer, and, and kind of the comments similar to the last amendment. It's just uh, again, we're, we're focusing uh, dollars on where we can really change people's lives uh, directly uh, to you know, families, workers, and seniors. And so uh, members, I would ask uh, for a no vote. And um, Representative McDonald. Uh, Mr. Chair, I support this amendment and in your comment regarding to uh that doesn't fit the needs to change people's families and lives. And I think you know better, it does. You're from a small town. You know what these charitable gambling does and the dollars that it goes to a good cause in communities from uh, this little, from the high schools to the veterans, to the homeless veterans. Uh, I see in our local VFWs and the Legion halls that uh, the money raised for uh, charitable gambling from various groups, such as the Lions Clubs, the Knights of Columbus, the KCs, the JCs, the hockey associations, et cetera, et cetera. They give a lot of money back to the community that touch people's lives. A family here in town lost their house, completely burned down. And yes, the charitable gambling money went to help that family and assist them. So too does it when they're sick ones and loved ones are ill. So I think you know better, Mr. Chair, this bill that Representative Detmer has will affect the lives of small town community and big town directly by allowing the organizations to keep more of their money so they can give it all away. So I support this amendment and I'm sure that when you go back home to Dilworth, your good folks and family and friends and will uh, ask you why you didn't support such a good amendment by Representative Detmer. So thank you, Representative McDonald. This House bill that you're gonna have a chance to vote on greatly will help people's lives directly, giving dollars directly to families, to veterans, to workers, to small businesses, to seniors, and um, literally millions uh, of dollars going out to our local communities. And I, um, I, I think, I mean, I think we all support our local charitable groups um, with our limited amount of dollars what we're doing is we're saying uh, we're going to provide those dollars directly and might be childcare or student loan credits or housing, whatever that might be. Um, but we're, we're getting to those very people that you just mentioned, Representative McDonald, in uh, a very meaningful way also. So Representative Detmer. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and I, I recall my years as uh, my 34 years as a teacher and coach. And I, because of the budgets that we had, uh, I had to go ask uh, different organizations for funds for uniforms. And, and when we wanted to take a trip for a big tournament, uh, funding to pay for our transportation. And guess what? I always went to the American Legion and the VFW to get funds for the, for the kids, uh, for the teams that I coached. And uh, I think this is my way of uh, saying back to them, not because we had good good teams or anything like that, but my way of getting back to them and say, hey, we're doing something for you at the state legislature and we're trying to help you out so that more of this money that uh, you raise through charitable gambling will stay 
to stay in our local communities. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Representative Detmer. With that, a roll call has been requested. Ms. Griska, please take the roll on House File 140 Amendment. Representative Marquardt. Marquardt votes no. Representative Marquardt, no. Representative Lissagard. Aye. Representative Lissagard, aye. Representative Davids. Davids votes aye. Representative Davids, aye. Representative Agbaje. No. Representative Agbaje, no. Representative Carlson. Carlson, no. Representative Carlson, no. Representative Detmer. Detmer, aye. Representative Detmer, aye. Representative Garofalo. Garofalo, aye. Representative Garofalo, aye. Representative Gomez. Gomez, no. Representative Gomez, no. Representative Her. No. Representative Her, no. Representative Hurtas. Hurtas, yes. Representative Hurtas, yes. Representative Howard. Howard, no. Representative Howard, no. Representative McDonald. McDonald, aye. Representative McDonald, aye. Representative Miller. Miller, aye. Representative Miller, aye. Representative Moran. No. Representative Moran, no. Representative Mortensen. Mortensen, aye. Representative Mortensen, aye. Representative Robbins. Aye. Representative Robbins, aye. Representative Sandell. Sandell, no. Representative Sandell, no. Representative Schultz. Schultz, no. Representative Schultz, no. Representative Stevenson. Stevenson, no. Representative Stevenson, no. Representative Swazinski. Swazinski, aye. Representative Swazinski, aye. Representative Joachim. No. Representative Joachim, no. We have 10 ayes, 11 nays. Thank you. There being 10 ayes, 11 nays, the motion does not prevail. The House file number 140 amendment is not adopted. Uh, next up, we have the House file 4729 amendment, and that is Representative McDonald. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Yes, of course, very similar to Rep Representative Detmers. This reduces the graduated rates of combined net receipts of the tax imposed on the net receipts from electronic paper pull tabs, electronic bingo, and tip boards. And it also modifies the stadium reserve calculation. So uh, basically uh, similar to Representative Detmers, but it does reduce the tax burden on those charitable gambling organizations, which if anyone in their district has any of those charitable gambling organizations, you most likely heard from them. I'd say that that's probably the number of items that I hear from often, uh, Social Security tax being one and several others, uh, but that that is one. So this does reduce the rate. Uh, and I, I hear often because I'm, you know, I attend the local organizations that sell them. Anyway, one of our uh, charitable groups last year brought in 5.7 million. The net profit after prizes was 743,000. Charitable gambling tax was 202,000. So it comes out to about 28% of the net prizes. So I think we can afford with the surplus in there uh, to reduce the tax rate on those charitable gambling and still bring in the tax dollars to fund government, uh, education, roads and bridges, and uh, all the important things that are important to us, healthcare, and yet still keep some of that money back in the hands of those nonprofits that uh, give away uh, so much back to the communities that I suggest mentioned in my uh, last comment to Representative Detmer's amendment. So that's the amendment, and I hope uh, uh, it's a friendly amendment, Mr. Chair, because <laughs> you're a friendly guy, and uh, it'd be good for uh, be good for the state and good for the people of Minnesota. So Representative McDonald has uh, moved the 4729 amendment. Representative Miller. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, you know these bills on the um, charitable gaming. I've and back and forth with each bill as to whether I should say what I'm about to say, but I think uh, Representative McDonald's bill kind of, and when he talked about that percentage, kind of put this over the top for me. You know, we we had the bill, I think it was last week, on the sports gambling, which everyone seems to want to pour into the state. Gambling is good, gambling is good, gambling is good, and guess what? We'll tax it and raise revenues. Well, 10% compared to that almost 30% that Representative McDonald is talking about, 
I think you could afford these reductions. If you're so intent on 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 uh, taxing sports gambling, which I'm I'm not for increasing taxes. I don't even support the tax on that. But if you're going to be taxing gambling as some sort of sin tax, then then do it with these betters across the state, not just in these small communities. You could definitely bank the savings. I know we can't do it on this amendment, but it's food for thought. You can bank the savings that you give to these charitable organizations over to uh, other betting things like that. Raise raise that if you're going to uh, uh, be taking this up because you know taxes always end up hurting the 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 end user, the consumer, and you know any any sort of spending that we do hurts the end user. But in the case of charitable contributions, that's not true. And Representative McDonald's just showed that it's hurting the organization that has to collect the taxes. So I think we could do better than that. Um, this won't address the sports betting issue that I talked about, but I think this is the least that we could do is to show these small towns and these, you know, these veterans and these other people that are just trying to help their local communities, as was discussed earlier. This is something that we can that we can fix. And I certainly hope that we can get the support of this committee to do that. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Representative Miller. Uh, anyone else like to comment uh, on the 4729 amendment? Uh, members, I would ask that you vote Mr. no. Chair. Representative Mr. McDonald, any final comments? Yep, be, uh, just since you re recommended your members to vote no, I will just uh, pitch this uh, and ask for their vote. Uh, it doesn't reduce it as much as a lot of the organization would like it to reduce, but it just goes from 9% to 7% uh, for some of the gross receipts. Um, if you look into the bill, you'll see the more details. But So it's not a huge decrease, but it's, uh, it's a start, and uh, it'll be appreciated by millions of folks here in the state. So um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Very good. I'll call for the vote on House File 4729. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed Aye. say nay. Nay. No. 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 Division. Division. The motion. <laughs> the motion does not. I've got to make a ruling. The motion does not prevail. Uh, the House File 4729 amendment is not adopted. All right. Thank you. Uh, next, House File 2985. And that is Representative Hurtos. Maybe we should appeal the ruling of the chair. <laughs> Mr. Chair, thank you. House file 2985 is about the state general levy. Members, there are about 132,000 commercial CI properties throughout the state that are paying the state general levy. Currently, uh, for most businesses, whatever your county, school, and uh, uh, municipal property taxes are, the state general levy impacts that amount by increasing local property taxes on that business by anywhere from about 26 to 35 percent, depends on the circumstances. Members, uh, this approximately uh, $760 million levy that uh, currently exists against these commercial property owners and businesses is money that's being taken right out of your own communities and being sent to St. Paul. That same money left in small towns in rural Minnesota could be used for higher wages, better benefits, and or even improvements or expansion of business within the community. So what the bill does is phases out the state general levy over two years. Our property tax uh, division report did little or nothing for businesses. Uh, it was heavily uh, expended in terms of resources towards renters. And uh, we all know that our businesses are struggling from the shutdowns that occurred. Some businesses, not so much because they were allowed to be opening, but the greater part of uh, small businesses uh, are really uh, suffering from uh, the costs. And I can tell you members, having owned a retail business for many years, that when you have a disruption to your business as which was caused by the state government shutdown and executive orders, that oftentimes the pain is latent. It's not immediately uh, felt. Uh, 
Uh, it, it continues on because your customers have been shifted into a different buying pattern and patronizing other companies or other stores, you lose market share. I can tell you my own experience where a state highway came through and disrupted our business for the entire construction season, seasonal that that particular business was, you kind of get through it, but then you suddenly realize where are my customers when the road is back open and they found other places to do their shopping or buying. Members, uh, given the amount of resources and the over collection of taxpayer money, a lot of this money, $760 million a year, is state general levy on businesses. So this bill proposes to phase this out over two years. So the fiscal cost would be approximately half of that. So with that, Mr. Chair, that's an explanation of the amendment. I think it would add more balance to this omnibus tax bill in terms of who's benefiting from it. And uh, with that, I'll request roll call on this one too. A uh, roll call has been requested. So um, uh, thank you, Representative Hurtas. Uh, Chair Joachim. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> I would just say that, uh, you know, reducing the state general levy and taking off in two years is a big change. And while I was not serving when the state general levy was put in place, I have done extensive research on how and why and talked to many of the people that were here at the time. Um, the state general levy was part of a package deal when the state compressed the tax rates and further shifted the education funding from local taxpayers to the state. Um, this, uh, they noticed that when they did that, the CI property received a rate cut of almost three times higher than other property types. So to balance this out, and part of the deal was that the state general levy was created. Um, since then, since that time, we've done, we've reduced it greatly. We've removed the inflator, we've reduced the levy, we've exempted the first 100,000 of property, and then last year, the first $150,000 of property. So we have changed it over time. And while this may be worthy of discussion, it really should be discussed in the context of the property tax rates as it was in the beginning, as well as how businesses will help provide for the education that they want to see for their future workforce. So members, I'd ask for a no vote. Any other thoughts on uh, the House File 2985 amendment? Representative Hurtas. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, uh... I've uh, researched this as well. And, you know, the state general levy was primarily brought about not simply because of the state taking over education, but because it had a budget deficit or a crisis and it was supposed to be a temporary tax. It was something that was imposed uh, upon businesses. Yes, there were components of the state general levy and some shifting. There was also the seasonal recreational owners association that uh, didn't like being uh, tax for local option school levies when they aren't there and their kids don't go to those schools. And so 5% uh, of the burden of the state general levy uh, was, uh, the agreement was made and was put on seasonal recreational properties as well. But it's time to uh, let the people decide the highest and best use for their dollars, 9.25 billion a lot of money laying around and this is an opportunity to get rid of this tax, a tax which I believe we're the only one left in the state in the nation that even does this to business. So if we truly want to encourage businesses to come to Minnesota and to grow and expand the business, this would be an important first step. Property taxes are something that has to be paid whether you generate $1 profit or even $1 of revenue. Either way, they have to be paid. So this would take a lot of the risk off of it, of uh, small business startups. And remember that most of the jobs in the economic engine in Minnesota is with small businesses. So with that, thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, I'll allow you to take the vote. Very good. Thank you very much, Representative Hurtas. Uh, a roll call has been requested. Ms. Griska, please take the roll on Amendment 2985. <clears throat> Representative Marquardt. Marquardt votes no. Representative Marquardt, no. Representative Liz Lagarde. Aye. Representative Liz Lagarde, aye. Representative Davids. Davids votes aye. Representative Davids, aye. Representative Agbaje. No. 
Representative Agbaje, no. Representative Carlson. Carlson, no. Representative Carlson, no. Representative Detmer. Detmer, aye. Representative Detmer, aye. Representative Garofalo. Garofalo, aye. Representative Garofalo, aye. Representative Gomez. Gomez, no. Representative Gomez, no. Representative Her. No. no. Representative Her, no. Representative Hurtas. Hurtas, yes. Representative Hurtas, yes. Representative Howard. Howard, no. Representative Howard, no. Representative McDonald. McDonald, aye. Representative McDonald, aye. Representative Miller. Miller, aye. Representative Miller, aye. Representative Moran. No. Representative Moran, no. Representative Mortensen. Mortensen, aye. Representative Mortensen, aye. Representative Robbins. Aye. Representative Robbins, aye. Representative Sandell. Sandell, no. Representative Sandell, no. Representative Schultz. Schultz, no. Representative Schultz, no. Representative Stevenson. Stevenson, no. Representative Stevenson, no. Representative Swazinski. Swazinski, aye. Representative Swazinski, aye. Representative Joachim. No. Representative Joachim, no. We have 10 ayes, 11 nays. Thank you. With uh, there being 10 ayes and 11 nays, the motion does not prevail. House file 2985 amendment is not adopted. Um, next up, House file 1101 amendment, Chair Davis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will move the House file 1101 amendment. This is a Bonner bill, before that it was a David's bill. Uh, what we're trying to do here is a higher education facilities authority. Uh, they cur currently have the authority to issue revenue bonds to finance private college construction projects, which the colleges will then pay uh, over time. Issuance of the bonds by a public entity like MHEFA is considered public financing. Generally, this type of legislation is, is in the tax bill in the public financing authority. Uh, in this bill, sections 9, 10, 16, and 21 deal with various aspects of revenue bonds. Uh, this is moving forward in the education, higher education bill, I believe, and it's hung up right now in the uh, Health and Human Services Committee. Generally, this is, is carried in uh, the tax bill. Uh, you, I think you carried before, Mr. Chairman, I've carried before. This just allows them to uh, uh, issue more uh, bonds here in or I think it's not just higher ed. I think you can, they can also do uh, health, not-for-profit health facilities and senior living facility projects. So uh, this is one that's, and I'm doing, this is in honor of Representative Phyllis Kahn who would stick her ideas in about 15 different places. Uh, I'm only on two right now, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm not aware of any opposition to this and uh, the folks that work in public finance bonds really do need this. So. I hope we can uh, put this in the tax bill. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, well, thank you very much, Representative Davids. And um, I mean, I don't have any opposition to what is here. It's just the fact that we just did not hear in taxes and I'm not sure of all the ramifications. And so um, while it's something that um, may find its way somewhere, I just don't think today is the time and place for the tax bill. So. Uh, members, I would ask uh, members uh, to vote no on uh, respectfully on the 1101 amendment. Chair Mr. Davis. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I withdraw the amendment. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Representative Davids withdraws the 1101 amendment. amendment. Uh, next up is the 2852 amendment. Uh, Representative Robbins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Go, Representative Robbins, please move 2852, if you would, please. So moved, Mr. Chair. I appreciate the opportunity to present this. Um, this bill um, was originally uh, Chair Davis and Representative Sandel. And basically, it allows a subtraction for um, individual income tax for employer student loan payments. And this is really important to help our young people get out of debt and it also conforms to federal law 
And so I hope that the committee will um, make this change and just um, help us be a state that conforms and it'll help retain workers here in our state if we conform. Thank you, uh, Representative Robbins. Uh, any comments on this, on the 2852 amendment? Uh, Representative Sandell. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, uh, um, Representative Robbins. I um, uh, concur with your comments and um, uh, hope that the committee would uh, reconsider. Thank you. Uh, thank you, um, Representative Sandell. So, I mean, we do have um, a student loan credit uh, in the bill at $1,400. And um, I mean, certainly there's um, having employers uh, help out with that. Uh, but right now, uh, members, I would ask a no vote on the 2852. Representative Robbins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And just for, um, as a reminder, this is a subtraction and it conforms to federal law. And so that's why I'm asking for the committee's support. And I would like a roll call, Mr. Chair. Thank you. A roll call has been requested. Any other comments? Vote oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you much. If not, Ms. Griska will please take the roll on 2852. Representative Marquardt. Marquardt votes no. Representative Marquardt no. Representative Liz Lagarde. No. Representative Liz Lagarde no. Representative Davids. Davids votes aye. Representative Davids aye. Representative Agbaje. No. Representative Agbaje no. Representative Carlson. Carlson, no. Representative Carlson, no. Representative Detmer. Detmer, aye. Representative Detmer, aye. Representative Garofalo. Garofalo, no. Representative Garofalo, no. Representative Gomez. Gomez, no. Representative Gomez, no. Representative Her. Her, no. Representative Her, no. Representative Hurtas. Sure, yes. Why not? <laughs> Representative Hurtas, I, yes. Representative Howard. Howard, no. Representative Howard, no. Representative McDonald. McDonald, aye. Representative McDonald, aye. Representative Miller. Miller, aye. Representative Miller, aye. Representative Moran. No. Representative Moran, no. Representative Mortensen. Mortensen, aye. Representative Mortensen, aye. Representative Robbins. Aye. Representative Robbins, aye. Representative Sandell. Sandell, aye. Representative Sandell, aye. Representative Schultz. Representative Schultz. Representative Stevenson. Representative Stevenson. Representative Swazinski. Representative Swazinski. Representative Joachim. No. Representative Joachim, no. Stevenson votes no. Stevenson, no. Uh, Schultz, Representative Schultz. Swazinski, aye. Oops. Res Representative Swazinski, aye. Representative Schultz. Uh, we have nine ayes, 11 nays. There be nine ayes and 11 nays. Uh, the motion does not prevail. The 2852 amendment is not adopted. Uh, next up, we have the 3564 amendment. Representative Robbins. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. This is the workforce training credit bill that we um, had a hearing on earlier in the year. And I wanna thank you, Mr. Chair, for giving it a hearing. Um, this is really important members. Uh, we have an incredible workforce shortage in our state. And as we all know, the state demographer thinks that um, 
the labor uh, pool is going to be flat to negative over the next 15 years. And I know that there are several programs that do um, provide some training, but I really think the most efficient way to go about it is to have um, employers design the training programs that best serve their needs and best help give their workers the skills and uh, productivity activity they need in their industry. So um, this bill, and, and just to clarify, I, I might need to do an amendment to the amendment, but the amended version we did in committee that it was $750 for eligible training expenses and capped at 100,000. And that is my intent with this amendment as well. So perhaps, you know, if, if by miracle I get this passed, the staff can make sure that happens. Okay. Um, but members, I, we talked about balance in this bill earlier and I don't see a lot in this bill for businesses. Um, and I really think that's the engine of our economy. If we're gonna have jobs in this state, we need to help people um, uh, be able to have the training they need and attract the workforce we need. So I, I'd ask for your support for this and, and I'd ask for a roll call. Thank you, a roll call has been requested. Any other comments on uh, the 3564 amendment? Uh, Cherio Joaquin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And um, they, uh, Representative Robbins, I noticed too, um, you and I had spoken that this does not follow the other tax expenditures we had of having it um, expire after eight years as well. So that was a concern, but my real concern, and I did bring it up in committee too, is that I, I don't see enough guardrails on here to show that the this training wouldn't happen without this tax credit. So um, would, I think it still needs some work and I will be voting no at this time. Um, thank you, Representative Joachim. Uh, uh, members, um, we do have significant um, tax cuts to businesses. In fact, I saw that the Senate passed their tax bill off the Senate floor today, and we have a lot more. We have a lot more business tax cuts in this bill and that what they passed off the House floor. All they have is some federal conformity, which we already have, but on top of that, we've got a county business uh, grants to those businesses that were probably missed out on a number of grants and aid. We've got 50 million going there. There's $20 million of tax relief for all those businesses during COVID who got state grants either through the state or the county, uh, those grants are actually taxable. We're saying they're not going to be taxed in our bill, uh, besides a num number of other credits and so forth that I could list. So uh, we are uh, uh, out of uh, the bills that will be passed today, one out of committee, one off the house floor. Um, we've got several times more business tax cuts than what the Senate does in their tax bill. So members, I would ask you to respectfully vote no. Representative Robbins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And um, Chair Joachim, I, I would be fine with a sunset. So I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that um, earlier. And I, with great respect, uh, Chair Marquardt, for all your work, and, and I do believe you support businesses, that businesses were shut down and giving them a tax break on money that they got to try to stay alive when that probably shouldn't have been taxed in the first place is helpful, but that's not providing the permanent incentives and relief they need to be competitive. So that's why I'm bringing this amendment and I would appreciate a yes vote. Thank you members. Thank you very much, Representative Robbins. Ms. Griska, please take the roll. Representative Marquardt. Marquardt votes no. Representative Marquardt, no. Representative Liz Lagarde. Yes. Representative Liz Lagarde, aye. Representative Davids. Davids votes aye. Representative Davids, aye. Representative Agbaje. No. Representative Agbaje, no. Representative Carlson. Carlson, no. Representative Carlson, no. Representative Detmer. Detmer, aye. Representative Detmer, aye. Representative Garofalo. Aye. Representative Garofalo, aye. Representative Gomez. Gomez, no. Representative Gomez, no. Representative Her. Representative Her. 
Representative Her. No. Representative Her, no. Representative Hurtas. Yes. Representative Hurtas, yes. Representative Howard. Howard, no. Representative Howard, no. Representative McDonald. McDonald, aye. Representative McDonald, aye. Representative Miller. Miller, aye. Representative Miller, aye. Representative Moran. Representative Moran. No. Representative Moran, no. Representative Mortensen. Mortensen, aye. Representative Mortensen, aye. Representative Robbins. Aye. Representative Robbins, aye. Representative Sundell. Aye. Representative Sundell, aye. Representative Schultz. No. Representative Schultz, no. Representative Stevenson. Stevenson, no. Representative Stevenson, no. Representative Swazinski. Swazinski, aye. Representative Swazinski, aye. Representative Joachim. Joachim, no. Representative Joachim, no. There's 11. Mr. Chair, I, Mr. Chair, I changed my uh, vote from yes to no. There's 10 ayes and 10 noes. All right, there being 10 ayes and 10 nays, uh, the motion does not prevail. Uh, the 3564 amendment is not adopted. Oops, Next up. We have House File 153 Amendment, Representative Robbins. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. And you've heard me discuss this many times before, but um, the bill thankfully does have increases for the education credit and deduction, uh, raising both the income thresholds and um, allows inflation and also um, uh, allows for, for the expansion of it, which is long overdue members. Um, so I'm grateful for that, but that does not really help, especially the most low-income families in the school districts where their students are struggling the most. And members, I have talked about this numerous times and I honestly was um, very frustrated listening to the testimony of uh, uh, the Commissioner of Revenue, I believe it was yesterday, discussing this issue. Um, saying that they were doing so much to empower parents and that this would make a big difference. I do believe it will make a big difference, members, in how it's currently constructed in the bill. But for families in um, the most, uh, who have the most needs in the lowest performing school districts who have um, tried everything and their schools were shut down, their students were on distance learning, then they faced a strike and their students missed another 15 days of school. These families, their kids have the lowest graduation rates, the lowest literacy rates, and they are struggling and they are looking for options. And so I, I find it honestly, members, unconscionable that the middle income families can use their tax deduction for tuition and they have for like 40 years and low income families cannot use the credit for tuition. I think it's unfair. I think it's unjust. And this is our opportunity to fix this. So members, I ask for your support for this. Um, it, it's been uh, something I've worked on for 26 years and I honestly can't believe I came back to the legislature and this hadn't been fixed when I first came here and now I've been working on it for four years and however long I'm here, I'll keep working on it members. Um, but, but this really matters for families to have options, especially when they are um, the ones who are struggling the most. So I appreciate your consideration. Thank you, Representative Robbins. Chair Joaquin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I just um, want to point out that the education credit as stands can be used for tutoring to catch kids up. And you're right, there's been a lot of learning loss. Um, I'm personally very excited for the bill we put in. Not only is it indexing it to inflation, making it easier for families to use because it moves to AGI, it's increasing um, the income threshold that we haven't done for years. And if you heard the testimony on this bill in education finance, and if you look at what we're doing in education finance with the over $3 billion investment in our kids to make sure we're meeting the needs. 
you'd be excited about this too. And I understand you're working on this. Moving this to tuition is just not somewhere we should be going right now. And honestly, $3 billion worth of investment in our education bill in the House, $30 million in the Senate. And I'll just leave it at that. Thank you, members. Any other comments before I turn it over to Representative Robbins? Representative Robbins, to your amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I appreciate that, Chair Joachim. I really do, um, but it's just not enough. Literally, since I first started working on this 26 years ago, the achievement gap has gotten worse. We have poured billions and billions of dollars into the same system, and it has not helped. The achievement gap is worse. So members, I ask for your support. We have to find a new way to move the needle. And um, I would like a roll call on this, Mr. Chair. A roll call has been requested. Uh, with that, Ms. Griska, please call the roll on Amendment 153. Representative Marquardt. Marquardt votes no. Representative Marquardt, no. Representative Lissagard. No. Representative Lissagard, no. Representative Davids. David votes aye. Representative Davids, aye. Representative Agbaje. No. Representative Agbaje, no. Representative Carlson. Carlson, no. Representative Carlson, no. Representative Detmer. Detmer, aye. Representative Detmer, aye. Representative Garofalo. Garofalo, aye. Representative Garofalo, aye. Representative Gomez. Gomez, no. Representative Gomez, no. Representative Her. Her, her no. Representative Her, no. Representative Hurtas. Hurtas, yes. Representative Hurtas, yes. Representative Howard. Howard, no. Representative Howard, no. Representative McDonald. McDonald, yes. Representative McDonald, yes. Representative Miller. Miller, aye. Representative Miller, aye. Representative Moran. Representative Moran. Representative Mortensen. No, Mortensen, aye. No for Moran. Uh, Representative Mortensen, aye. Representative Moran, no. Representative Robbins. Aye. Representative Robbins, aye. Representative Sandell. Sandell, no. Representative Sandell, no. Representative Schultz. No. Representative Schultz, no. Representative Stevenson. Stevenson, no. Representative Stevenson, no. Representative Swazinski. Swazinski, aye. Representative Swazinski, aye. Representative Joachim. Joachim, no. Representative Joachim, no. We have nine eyes, 12 no. There be uh, nine eyes and 12 no's. The motion does not prevail. The uh, 153 amendment is not adopted. Uh, members, I think we're on the last amendment. It's House File 3478, Representative McDonald. Hey, great. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, this uh, amendment, reduces the income personal tax rate by 1% across the whole boards. Why do you ask? I'm glad you asked, Mr. Chair, because we in Minnesota, as all you know, because we are lawmakers and we should know this, we are an outlayer uh, in uh, our area. We are the highest tax rate in the five star area and the sixth highest tax rate in the nation, uh, Iowa was closest. They were by, they were 8.53% uh, for their highest rate, we're at 9.85%, but you know that. But did you know that as of March 1st, Governor Reynolds in a bipartisan bill passed the most historic tax reform bill in the history of Iowa, and they went to a flat tax of 3.9% and reformed corporate tax rate as well. So we're an outlier. We know we need to fix it. It's only a matter of time. You guys can get credit for this year, House Democrats, if you want, that's fine. If you don't, we're going to have to do it next year. You guys can have credit. This is an amendment that you can have an opportunity to keep and give back some of that nine point something million do billion dollars uh, surplus back to the people of Minnesota. I don't know about you, but I've heard from many folks in my district uh, that they want permanent and meaningful tax cuts. This is the amendment to do so. Uh, 
Um, in the yesterday's hearing, Mr. Chair, we had several of your testifiers, the testifiers, including Commissioner Doty, said they wanted to expand economic opportunity for all Minnesotans. This is the amendment. They said they wanted tax, targeted tax relief to Minnesota families and businesses. This is the amendment. They wanted fair and equitable tax bill for Minnesota Minnesotans. This amendment is the one that can do that. And then lastly, uh, one was a, a comment was said by that was supporting your tax bill, a tax system that works for all Minnesotans. And although there's some good provisions in their tax bill, Minnesota, uh, Mr. Chair, this provision, the 1% tax rate across all board uh, will e make it even better. And we can do permanent meaningful tax cuts and be uh, 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 competitive to our states around us. It's very important. Uh, so that is the amendment. I ask for roll call. I encourage all members to uh, to have a really historic opportunity to reduce the tax burden on Minnesota families and uh, businesses. And this is the this is the amendment. So I look forward to your yes votes, fellow members. Thank you, Representative McDonald. Uh, any comments? Uh, I would just say, um, you know, this amendment would be a cost of about $2 billion a year and yet not provide a dime of tax cut for over 500,000 filers, which is about almost 20%. And these are folks who, you know, pay property taxes, pay sales taxes, uh, all these other type of taxes. So uh, members, I think in the House file 3669, we have a better plan that directs dollars to those who need it the most and it's really going to make a difference. So I would ask members to vote no. Representative McDonald. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, I don't know about that, but uh, even our lowest bracket of 5.35% is one of the highest in the nation. So if, for those of you who are concerned of those who are in the lowest bracket, this is an opportunity to uh, even reduce that tax burden on those who uh, probably live paycheck to paycheck. Uh, and then it's, it's good for all Minnesotans, all tax filers of all brackets, of all all causes. So, uh, Mr. Chair, this this is really an opportunity to make your bill even better, and you could go out with a bang and historic opportunity as you retire from the legislature, and forever we will call this the Paul Representative Paul Marcourt tax rate accomplishment of the century. Mr. Chair, I encourage you to yes vote. Thank you very much, Representative McDonald. Ms. Griska, please take the roll. Representative Marcourt. Uh, Marcourt votes no. Representative Marker, no. Representative Lissagard. Yes. Representative Lissagard, yes. Representative Davids. Davids votes aye. Representative Davids, aye. Representative Agbaje. No. Representative Agbaje, no. Representative Carlson. Carlson, no. Representative Carlson, no. Representative Detmer. Detmer, aye. Representative Detmer, aye. Representative Garofalo. Garofalo, aye. Representative Garofalo, aye. Representative Gomez. Gomez, no. Representative Gomez, no. Representative Her. No. Representative Her, no. Representative Hertas. Hertas, yes. And yes to renaming the amendment. <laughs> Representative Hertas, yes. Representative Howard. Howard, no. Representative Howard, no. Representative McDonald. Yes, McDonald, yes. Representative McDonald, yes. Representative Miller. Miller, aye. Representative Miller, aye. Representative Moran. No. Representative Moran, no. Representative Mortensen. Mortensen, aye. Representative Mortensen, aye. Representative Robbins. Aye. Representative Robbins, aye. Representative Sandell. Sandell, no. Representative Sandell, no. Representative Schultz. Schultz, no. Representative Schultz, no. Representative Stevenson. Stevenson, no. Representative Stevenson, no. Representative Swazinski. Swazinski, aye. Representative Swazinski, aye. Representative Joachim. Joachim, no. Representative Joachim, no. We have 10 ayes, 11 noes. There being 10 ayes and 11 noes, 
the motion does not prevail. The 3478 amendment is not adopted. Uh, members, that's it for the amendments. Um, what I would like to do right now then is, and this is not the final vote on the bill, but I'd like to now adopt uh, the A22-0407 uh, amended as amended. And um, just take a, a voice vote. Like I said, this is not the bill. This is just really now to get the bill into its form. And then after this vote, then we'll open it up for members comments. So with that, I'd like to call for the vote on the A22-0407 amendment as amended. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Th those opposed say nay. No. Nay. 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 Listening very carefully, the motion does prevail. The A22-0407 amendment as amended is adopted. Members, Selective the House hearing. file 3669 as amended. And again, what we're going to do is the last four, if you wish, would be Representative Hurtaz, Representative Chair Joachim, Chair Davids, uh, and myself. So any other comments on the bill before we move to the vote on House File 3669 as amended? Representative McDonald. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So you have a question, Mr. Chair, regarding the uh, beginning farmers credit uh, expanded to include LLCs, uh, Miller's bill. Now, I remember this in committee. I read it. But um, I actually have a farmer friend coming in my studio here just in a few moments, hopefully after the bill is passed or whatever. But uh, what exactly does that do for, for a young farmer? And uh, this particular friend, uh, son bought a farm land just a year ago. It, is it retroactive? So how does it really help a 25 year old, 30 year old young farmer? So Representative McDonough, if you don't mind, I'd like to turn that over to staff uh, because I just, no, in the particular. So uh, would that be Mr. Williams or Mr. Williams? Uh, Chair Markworth and Representative McDonald, uh, there's there's two sort of main changes and it looks like Representative Miller uh, wishes to speak. He can probably explain his own bill quite well. Um, but the, the first change is allowing single member LLCs to qualify for the credit. Um, that's the change that Representative Miller brought forward this year. And then separately, there was a change um, that was included in last year's bill allowing sales uh, for the agricultural assets credits to certain family members. And very good. Now, let me, Representative Miller, it is your uh, item that was uh, added to the bill. So, Representative. Yeah, thank, thanks, Mr. Chair. And, and to the direct answer to Representative McDonald is, is our current bill is not retroactive. It was problematic to try and make that work. I know the people that wanted it to be retroactive aren't going to be really happy with that, but that was a challenge. I can't tell you what the Senate has a bill. I don't know if it's retroactive. Uh, it had to do with some cost clarities. Um, the important thing to remember with this, the best way to explain this bill was when we first passed this tax credit, the whole intent was um, we have an aging farming population and we discussed many different ways to maybe incentivize younger farmers getting involved. Long story short, we believe that a tax credit on the transfer basically of land, or I understand there's businesses that we would give an incentive for that. Well, that was a couple of years ago. And as this bill, if you will, was used and matured, it kind of exposed, um, and I hadn't thought of this in the past, but that's why sometimes bills need to be tweaked a little bit or laws need to be tweaked. Um, what was exposed is, is in the farm world, most farms that are formed today are formed under an LLC. Uh, so it's like a tax position, if you will, um, you know, more of like a business decision, but effectively was the same. A young farmer wants to get into farming and this was their opportunity, but they were ineligible if they were an LLC. So when we first ran into this, uh, we, went, we went to the department and said, what do you know about this? And they came back with this language right away, basically saying, yes, this is kind of a hang up. So I've referred to this as a borderline technical change to what the original bill was. This is just a way to get more into the intent of uh, what that original bill that if you're a beginning farmer, if you are someone who wants to get in and there's, by the way, for people that don't know, there's actually in statute a classification of what qualifies you as a beginning farmer. And I'm gonna get the numbers a little bit wrong, but it's about 850,000 in assets, less than 10 years in, and there's a couple other things. There were a lot of beginning farmers that qualified, but they formed as an LLC and they were on the outside looking in. So this bill just 
brings um, them into the conversation. I hope Representative McDonald that answered your questions. I'd be happy to clarify if there's anything else. Representative McDonald. Yeah, I think so. I, I just, I probably should have said, can you explain it to me like a kindergartner, you know, the, the, you hear some once in a while or a fifth grader, but I do get it a little bit more. So thank you, uh, Representative Miller. And just lastly, because I know there's other comments and then we want to get on with the day. Uh, I think we missed an opportunity, Mr. Chair, when not having an unemployment tax uh, in your tax bill. Uh, there's good provisions there. I like Listigard's uh, agriculture sales tax exemption for the state county fairs. And, uh, but uh, I think there's some opportunities lost here, especially some of the amendments that your fellow uh, colleagues on the Republican side offered to make your bill better. That is all, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Representative McDonald. Um, anyone else before we go to some leads? Um, all right. Uh, oh, Representative Howard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I am very excited to vote for this bill and want to thank you and the members of the committee uh, that uh, worked to, to form this and put this together. It really feels to me uh, as uh, a centerpiece in, in the way that this majority is working to reduce costs for families, to be strategic and targeted, and uh, really focus uh, where we should, helping the families that could most uh, use a break, use a boost after two years during this pandemic. Um, in particular, uh, this bill is making strong investments that will make housing more affordable for Minnesotans. And for most families, housing is their number one expense. So it's strategic and impactful to be uh, utilizing uh, all the tools we have in our, in our toolbox to help renters and homeowners afford the roof over their head. And for a lot of families, if, if housing isn't their uh, most expensive cost, it's childcare, or maybe childcare is the most expensive. And so I'm just so excited about the great start child uh, care tax credit and the meaningful resources that will come to families. Um, and by making childcare more affordable, I think we're going to see not only a, a boost to family budgets, but uh, more parents being able to return to the workforce. And it's a, a, a tool for us to address our workforce shortage, which is a win win uh, for families and for our economy. And, and there are several examples um, of the targeted action in this bill. And I think that's what I want to comment the most on is I think targeted is the operative word here. Uh, we aren't going the route of the other body with blanket tax cuts where the largest benefits go to millionaires and the ultra wealthy. Uh, the, the reality is millionaires don't need a tax break. And it's frankly a poor strategy to grow our economy in either the short term or the long term. Um, you know, if there's a, uh, for, just as an analogy, if there's a, a fire at a house, in the house in the neighborhood, you don't send the fire department uh, to spray water over every single house in the neighborhood, including the big mansion on the corner. Um, this is taking targeted action to those who need it. Um, and just as an example here that I think is worth our, our thinking about who we should be looking to help with our tax code. I, I read this week that a CEO for a Minnesota company uh, received a 65% increase in their pay last year. More power to, to you, I guess, but does that CEO really need a $1,000 tax cut like they'd get uh, in, in the other body? Um, is that $1,000 going to make a lick of difference in their spending habits in terms of money going back into the economy? It just strikes me as a lazy approach. And so I'm so glad that this tax bill is taking a different tact, a more targeted approach focused on the families that need it. And that's going to help our economy grow. Um, and so, uh, and lastly, uh, this targeted approach takes the full picture. It allows us to make the kind of investments we need uh, for quality public schools, as Chair Joachim had mentioned, to make childcare affordable, reduce the cost of housing, take the full picture and, and do things that will help our, our families and our economy set up for success in the short term and the long term. So, so members, this bill will make a big, big difference in the pockets, book, pocketbooks of families that could really use a boost, and I'm proud to support it. Thank you. Uh, Representative Egbaje. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, just and to the members of the committee, it's been great to work with everyone again this year. Um, I just want to say that, you know, I'm really appreciative of this bill. I think it does a lot to really kind of balance the support that we need to be providing to Minnesotans across the state. Um, and really, as Representative Howard was saying, it's very targeted and it's very targeted for people. Um, and, I, and I think that that is why I'm 
glad that we'll be moving forward. Um, some of the things in here that we've been talking about, but again, just want to highlight for um, the good of the order is, you know, we've got really nice things in here for renters, when it, particularly when it comes to the renters tax credit, as well as uh, additional support for rental assistance. We know that making sure that people can be stable in their homes and that um, reducing some of the costs there will help a lot, um, particularly with the turbulence that we've been through for the past couple of years. Um, I'm also really glad to see additional support for student loans. Um, I think that that's really um, good that we have that in there. Um, we know that that is continuing to be something that um, people in younger generations continue to struggle with. Um, and then finally, looking forward to seeing the small business support. Um, I advocated for that bill. I think it's something that's really strong for many of our corridors across the state. We know that our small businesses are a lifeblood in the engine of so many of our neighborhoods and communities. And so um, I'm glad to see that, that that is also included in this bill. So thank you so much, Chair Marquardt. It's been an honor and a pleasure and uh, look forward to moving this bill. So thank you. Thank you very much. Um, not seeing anyone else, um, Representative Hurtaz, you're next if you want as a lead on the property tax division. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, thank you uh, for the years of service that uh, you have given to the state. And um, my first encounter with you was uh, chair of the property tax division, I think some 10 years ago. Um, but anyway, I've been, enjoyed working with you. There's a couple of things about this bill I just uh, wanted to take a, a moment to comment on. And one uh, in the um, kind of going over the bill a couple of days ago and uh, when most research was kind of going over things, um, they said some things about the Stillborn Tax Credit, which you have <clears throat> uh, included. And you and I have uh, worked together on this for about five years now, I think, four for sure, five maybe. And um, what is important for uh, other members to know, as well as uh, members in the other chamber, is that the stillborn tax credit is already law and it has been for some time. What this bill sought to do was address those shortcomings, uh, particularly in uh, Chair Marquardt's backyard, uh, where you have uh, a lot of the business and services have migrated across the state line. And um, there's good health care uh, just across the state line in North Dakota, where many of uh, mm. the Dilworth folks go to have children. And unfortunately, the, the uh, law, the way it was written, if that stillborn birth occurred outside of the state and the birth certificate wasn't in Minnesota, uh, families who are residents of Minnesota were not eligible for that credit. That was the main force of what that bill tried to do. Ironically, we provide exceptions for military uh, personnel who maybe have a baby overseas or elsewhere, uh, but we don't do it for our own people here in Minnesota. So hopefully that might make it across the finish line this year. Also, I'm uh, happy, although it's uh, small and uh, in, uh, just a small little bite out of a big problem that we have with our complicated property tax system, it finally got a little bit of compression in uh, tax rates uh, with the manufactured housing and just eliminated uh, three, three rates based on different types of use of manufactured housing. And uh, this is important too, because we've been talking about uh, ways to create more affordable housing and certainly manufactured homes are an affordable option, not only uh, in the suburbs where mobile home parks do exist, but also in greater Minnesota. And uh, we could do more uh, to provide shelter for those who can least afford it by having this affordable alternative rather than trying to uh, zone out these uh, facilities that exist even in the suburbs. Um, some of the things that, that are a little troublesome to hear uh, this whole session is the overgeneralization and the overcharacterization about uh, big business and corporate profits. And we just heard about executives getting 65% increases in pay. Uh, that's quite an obfuscation in terms of what is the typical profile of a corporate entity in Minnesota. For the most part, uh, about 75% uh, of the private sector that works for small companies works for that are employed 20 people or less. 
And uh, it's, it's important to recognize that this is where the engine of economic growth is occurring. Yes, big companies are growing, but unfortunately, they're not spending and investing and growing in Minnesota because of our lack of competitiveness with where, where they can locate or expand and grow elsewhere. And case in point is, you know, seeing big companies move in domicile and even in other countries. Um, and it's a shame. Uh, Medtronic was one uh, during my tenure in the legislature that was quite a disappointment to see him move, but I understand why they did. Mr. Chair, um, there's quite a bit of difference between this bill and the one that's going to be coming out of the other chamber. I think there's a, a lot of work that's going to need to be done if we're going to have a tax bill. Um, I'm disappointed about the uh, lack of balance in terms of uh, the amount of money being spent in different areas that it wasn't really uh, more proportioned out in terms of uh, addressing uh, in a more bipartisan way, uh, all of the constituents of Minnesota. Too much of the targeted relief uh, and so much of this bill uh, doesn't benefit all Minnesotans, although you have claimed it does. I don't view it as a tax cut, really. What we're doing is we're creating more programs more spending that are going to be dependent on future general fund revenues to continue subsidizing or buying down some of these costs. And so I would beg members of the tax committee to focus more on what we can do to raise the incomes of those lowest income earners. What can we do to provide more opportunities and more employment opportunities, less obstructions to uh, pathways to lift themselves out of poverty, reducing the amount of licensing that's required uh, to have an occupation or a trade in this state, and basically focus on regrowing the middle class rather than creating a whole dependent class of constituents who are dependent on government spending to support their lifestyle. So I, I see some shortcomings here and uh, have enjoyed working uh, with Chair Joachim and you. And, uh, and all of the members of the committee and uh, everybody well. But uh, I think we've still got more work to do and we've got more opportunity to do just that. And with that, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Representative Hurtaz. Uh, Chair Joachim. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and thank you members for today. I'll be brief because Everybody's kind of said everything I wanted to, especially uh, Representative Howard and Re Representative Agbaje. Um, members, this is a good bill. Um, it has something for everyone to like. Um, the bill that just passed off the Senate floor today is woefully lacking. I keep hearing there's going to be a second one. I'll see it when I believe it. <laughs> Our bill does the heavy lifting, and thank you, Chair, for doing that. It provides permanent tax cuts to Minnesotans in every one of our communities and puts money back in their pockets at a time when they need it the most. It also provides flexibility and funding to our cities and counties. More importantly, behind each one of those numbers on the spreadsheet are Minnesotans. People who are counting on us to make their lives just a little bit easier, a little bit more fair. And I really do believe that this bill does that. So thank you, Mr. Chair and committee members for putting it all together and putting together a really great bill. Thank you, Chair Joaquin. Chair Davids. Oh, well, thank you, uh, Chair Marcourt. I'd like to thank you I'd really like to thank your staff, our staff, for all the work they've done to make this work, to make it possible. Uh, I think we need to, this bill will pass out today, it will go to Ways and Means, and the debate continues. We are uh, far from done with this. But basically, I just, Chair, Mr. Chairman, I want to thank you for all you've done here. I want to thank uh, Vice Chair Liz Lugard, uh, for his work on the committee. There, there are some good things in this bill. There's some uh, issues that I don't, that I think are not so good, uh, but that's what an omnibus tax bill is, uh, Mr. Chair and members. Uh, I am concerned about the working family credit given to undocumented workers. Uh, that would be one uh, concern I have. I'm also concerned about some of the tone of what I heard today from some members regarding class warfare uh, and how we continually attack those that are paying the bills. And I hope that can be limited or stopped altogether as we move forward. I think it's totally unnecessary. Um, we're here to debate tax policy. And I think we've uh, done a lot of that. So 
Uh, there's some things that I really like in this bill. Some of some people call them the smaller things, but they're not small to the people that they're affecting. For example, uh, I'm glad that we give better guidance and direction to the Department uh, of Revenue, who doesn't sometimes I think I don't think they read very well um, regarding the Liz Lagarde bill on uh, co ops, how after 80 years now they're starting to tax appurtenances. And I think uh, that's wrong. I wish they would just come forward and say, I will stop doing that, but no, we have to put in legislation to improve their reading ability. Uh, so with that, Mr. Chairman, again, thanks to you. Uh, thanks to uh, Vice Chair Liz Lagarde, Chair Joachim. Uh, I'd especially like to thank uh, the Republican staff, the DFL staff, uh, and to all the members that have really worked very hard in this committee and taken it very seriously. So uh, we move forward. And uh, again, Mr. Chair, thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Lee Davids, for those comments. And uh, members, um, thank you so much uh, for the, the debate today uh, and all year in this committee. And I first of all want to thank the staff. And I'm just going to go through them uh, by name quickly. The House Public Information Service, uh, Barry LaGrave, Chris Carpenter, Rob Hubbard, our House Research, Sean Williams, Chris Clayman, Jared Swanson, Justin Cope, Alex Hagler, our House Fiscal Staff, Cynthia Templin, Catherine Schill, uh, our revisers, <laughs> uh, sometimes unnoticed, Evan Powell and Maureen uh, Sandy, uh, and then our partisan staff, uh, Kelly um, Canabanti, and our DFL staff, Ursula Griska, Eric Peterson, Sean Haydorn, Committee Administrator, Holly Sergbanik. Uh, and um, thank you. I mean, without all of those efforts, as Chair David just mentioned and others, we wouldn't be able to put a bill together. So thank you so much. Also, a thank you again to Commissioner Doty and Department of Revenue for all of their uh, efforts in helping provide information we need. And then the testifiers. Uh, the testifiers really kind of are able to pick, uh, paint a picture for us. So I appreciate every single testifier that came before the committee. And uh, members, uh, thank you. I think we put together a good bipartisan bill. And by my last count, I think we have 24 uh, GOP provisions uh, in the bill. And <laughs> Much to my surprise, almost a few more uh, were added today, but uh, it's at 24. Uh, but I think that speaks very well to um, the, the input that we have here. So I really uh, thank everyone for that, uh, putting together a bipartisan bill. Just a few comments because uh, everything has basically been said. But this bill does provide over $3 billion of tax cuts uh, for in the next three years for those folks who really can use it the most, where I think it can really make the difference. And we're talking about our young families and our workers uh, and our senior citizens. And I just wanna give you one example and then we'll finish. But let's take a young family under this bill, if this became law. If you've got a family of four and uh, we know that young families that is at the time of your life where you probably have the least amount of income you're going to have, but probably more expenses. You've got childcare expenses, you've got mortgage expenses, uh, you've got property tax expenses, you've got student loan expenses, and you are really facing a challenge day to day to make ends meet. And it's tough we know raising uh, children. But this bill, and this is what we talk about where we think we're providing targets and significant cuts that really help folks. So a family of two, a family of four with two children under the age of five uh, with um, childcare costs of you know, normal 12,000, whatever that might be, would get $6,000 in credits. Uh, also, they would receive a $325 rebate, a rebate just like Governor Walls, uh, where you're sending checks out this summer, but it would be a credit, $325 uh, per child under 17. That's what, 
$650 of tax cuts. And that's not including if they happen to have an outstanding student loan, which could add up to $1,400 per spouse. That is significant. That makes a difference. And I could give you examples for seniors and for workers that would have the very same type of impact. So members, uh, this is a bill that gets the folks who really can use it and it moves the dial for folks. And so uh, members, uh, there's been a lot of work on this bill. We've taken a lot of input on the bill. It's a bipartisan bill. And I would ask um, members for your support. And so with that, members, I will renew my motion um, to move House File 3639, 3669 as amended to be referred to the Committee on Ways and Means and also instruct staff to make any technical and conforming changes that are necessary. That is the motion. And we will take a roll call. And with that, Ms. Griska, would you please take the roll? Representative Marcourt. Marcourt votes aye. Representative Marcourt, aye. Representative Liz Lagarde. Liz Lagarde, aye. Representative Liz Lagarde, aye. Representative David. David's votes aye. Representative David's aye. Representative Agbaje. Aye. Representative Agbaje, aye. Representative Carlson. Carlson, aye. Representative Carlson, aye. Representative Detmer. Detmer, nay. Uh, Representative Detmer, no. Representative Garofalo. Garofalo, no. Representative Garofalo, no. Representative Gomez. Gomez, aye. Representative Gomez, aye. <clears throat> Representative Her. Her, aye. Representative Her, aye. Representative Hurtas. Hurtas, no. Representative Hurtas, no. Representative Howard. Howard, aye. Representative Howard, aye. Representative McDonald. McDonald, no. Representative McDonald, no. Representative Miller. Miller, no. Representative Miller, no. Representative Moran. Aye. Representative Moran, aye. Representative Mortensen. Mortensen, no. Representative Mortensen, no. Representative Robbins. No. Representative Robbins, no. Representative Sandell. Sandell, aye. Representative Sandell, aye. Representative Schultz. Schultz, aye. Representative Schultz, aye. Representative Stevenson. Stevenson, aye. Representative Stevenson, aye. Representative Swazinski. Swazinski, no. Representative Swazinski, no. Representative Joachim. Joachim, yes. Representative Joachim, yes. I have 13 yes, eight no. Uh, there being 13 ayes and eight noes, the motion does prevail. House file 3669 as amended is referred to the Ways and Means Committee and staff is instructed to make any technical and conforming changes. Uh, thank you members. Uh, we will meet tomorrow at one. I just wanna conclude by saying, um, the respectful and thoughtful discussion we had today uh, from all of you members is why I'm so proud to chair this committee. With that members, we are adjourned. Mm -hmm.